this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a guide on every single fruit in Blocks Fruits, as well as some tricks to use for all of them. So first up, we got the literal worst fruit in all of Blocks Fruits, the Kilo Fruit. This fruit costs a total of 5,000 belly or 50 robux from the Blocks Fruit dealer, and it has a 100% chance of being in stock. Its first ability is called 10,000 kg, and the user basically just changes their weight to 1,000 kg and smashes the ground, dealing a bunch of area damage. The X ability is called 20,000 kg, and this one is kind of similar to the X ability, but you send a shockwave forward, but it deals a bit more damage. The C ability is called 50,000 kg, and this is just a better version of the X ability, where you just smash the ground super hard, dealing more damage than the Z ability, but for this one, you even stun the enemies for a bit. The F ability is called Lighten, and for this one, you basically just spawn in an umbrella, and as long as you keep holding the F key down, keep flying higher and higher until you reach nowhere. Pretty good thing about this fruit is that it's always in stock, so you can pretty much get it whenever you want and also it's really cheap and if you have this fruit equipped then you probably want to get a different fruit as soon as possible bye have a great time next up we got the spin fruit this fruit costs a total of 7500 belly or 75 robux from the box fruit dealer it also has a hundred percent chance of being in stock and a 13 percent chance of spawning randomly its first ability is called Razor Wind, and basically this is where their user spins their hand and makes a bunch of wind slashes that do a bunch of damage to anybody that's standing in front of them. The X ability is called Tornado Assault, and the user spins their whole body to make a tornado that deals a decent amount of damage and sends their opponents flying into the air. The C ability is called Spinning Bomber, and this is where the user spins and fires 5 different bombs that deal a good amount of damage. The F ability is called Helicopter Fly, and for this one, you just turn your head and hands into a helicopter and you just start flying forward. It looks pretty funny if you ask me. In its pros, this fruit is pretty similar to the Kilo fruit. It's always in stock and a pretty cheap fruit to buy, but this is probably not the best choice. Next up, we got the Chop Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 30,000 belly or 100 Robux from the Blast Fruit dealer. It has a 35% chance of being in stock and a 15% chance of spawning. And a really good thing about this fruit is that you have complete sword immunity, even if the user has aura. The Z ability is called Tackle. This is where you just separate your torso from your legs and you just lunge forward, hitting anybody that's in front of you. The X ability is called Dance. And for this one, you just separate all your body parts and you turn into this weird tornado kind of thing and you deal a good amount of damage if you run into someone. The C ability is called Party. And for this one, your fists basically separate from the rest of your body, doing a barrage of attacks and punches. And this move lasts longer the longer it's held down, and it doesn't let your opponent escape it, even if they have observation. And the flying ability for this one is called Helicopter, similar to the Spin Fruit, but this time it's the back part of your body, and it looks pretty funny as well. Overall, this fruit is really decent beginner fruit, and if you're new to the game, this is something you definitely want to keep your eye on. But it has really bad range, so fighting players from afar is a big no-no. Next on the list is the Spring Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 60,000 belly or 180 Robux from the Blocks Fruits dealer. You can also get this fruit from killing a boss called Jeremy in the second scene. So its first ability is called Knock, and for this one you basically just send your fist flying forward, dealing a bunch of damage. The X ability is called Spring Snipe, and for this one you basically just lunge forward using springs on the back of your feet. If anybody's in your way, you just run into them and do a bunch of damage. The next ability is called Spring Cannon, and you basically jump into the air and fall right back down, and if anybody's standing there, they take a bunch of damage. The V ability is called Spring Emperor, and for this one you turn both your legs into springs and you start jumping all over the place. Next up we got the Movement ability, and this one is called Spring Leap. And then you start bouncing off a bunch of walls, gaining a bunch of speed and momentum while you're doing it. But keep in mind you do have to have a bunch of buildings around, because if there's no buildings, then where are you gonna bounce on? Okay, so the next fruit on the list is called the Bomb Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 80,000 belly or 220 Robux from the Box Fruits dealer. It has a 24% chance of being in stock and a 14% chance of spawning randomly. So the first ability is called Targeted Bomb, and this is basically wherever you're pointing, you can charge a bomb with your mouse cursor. It sends them flying into the sky. The X ability is called Bomb Grab. Upon contact with the enemy, they grab the enemy and then releases an explosion which flings them far away. The C ability is called Landmines, and this is where the user can create a bunch of mines in a certain range. Anybody that walks into them will take a bunch of damage. And keep in mind, these mines are only visible to the person that uses them, so other players cannot see them. The V ability is called Self Destruct, and if you click it once, it creates a huge explosion. But you can actually charge up this ability, so if you hold it down for a bunch of time until it's fully charged and then let go, it becomes an S plus level ability. The F ability is called Explosive Jump, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You basically just get around doing a bunch of explosions. The best thing about this food overall is it's really fun for trolling, especially your friends and other players. But it's pretty bad for long range, so I don't recommend this for fighting other people. 
Next up is the smoke fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 100,000 belly, or 250 Robux from the box fruit dealer. This fruit has a 25% chance of being in stock and a 13% chance of spawning. This is probably the best starter fruit that any player can get. It's an elemental fruit, so as long as you're fighting enemies that don't have hockey, you'll take absolutely no damage while grinding. So the first ability is called Smoke Slam. The user turns their hand into smoke and then slams it onto the ground, dealing a bunch of damage. And the X ability is called Smoke Blast. Fires forward a smoke cloud, which on impact leaves a smoke effect, slashing the enemy multiple times. The C ability is called Smoke Liberation, and this is where you blast out a tornado, which does a really good amount of area damage. And now we got probably the best ability, and considered a really good starter fruit for grinding. Smoke Bomber. The user basically turns into an airplane, and you can just fly around dropping a bunch of smoke bombs where you go. And the best thing about it is that it's infinite, so as long as you're holding the key down, you can fly around dealing a bunch of damage. And if you fly above your enemies, they won't even be able to hit you. It's amazing for grinding, and really decent for combos, especially if you combine it with Electric Claw. But a bad thing is that its range is not that good compared to other fruits. So next up we got the spike fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 180,000 belly or 380 robux from the box fruits dealer. Its stock chance and spawn chance are completely unknown, but it's a pretty common fruit. The Z ability is called Spike Summon, and this is exactly what it sounds like. You just summon a bunch of spikes where your cursor is, and if you hold down the ability, the spikes become way bigger. The X ability is called Whirlwind, and the user spins their arms around, dealing a bunch of damage. And the longer it's held, the more damage it does. The C ability is called Spiky Ball. And it's pretty self-explanatory, you just turn into a spiky ball and you can just roll at your enemies. And if you hit them, you just drag them along with you and they can't do anything to escape it. The V ability is called Spike Barrage, and this is where you summon a bunch of spikes in a row in the direction you're facing. And the longer you hold it down, the bigger the spikes get. The good thing about this fruit is that it does really decent damage for how much it costs. But it's pretty bad for grinding, and if you have this fruit, you want to switch to a different one as soon as possible. Okay, so now on to the flame fruit. The flame fruit is an elemental type fruit, and it costs 250,000 belly or 550 robux. And it has a 30% chance of being in stock and a 12% chance of spawning. And this is the worst fruit in the game that actually has an awakening. And for its price and rarity, it's overall a pretty decent fruit. It's really useful for early game players, but not so good for people that are a higher level. And it has some decent PvP potential, but you probably want to upgrade to a different fruit as soon as you can. So, the first ability for the flame fruit is called fire bullets, like you just shoot small fireballs at the target. The second ability is called burning blast, and this one you shoot a huge fireball at the direction you're aiming. The next ability is called fire colon, and this is kind of similar to the bomb fruit self destruct, kind of like a fire tornado that just shoots up fire into the sky. Pretty cool and decent damage. Next up is flame destroyer, and this you charge up a ball of fire above your head and then you can shoot it wherever you want. Finally, the F ability is called Rocket Flight, and this is kind of similar to the Life Fruits ability, but it's just a bit slower version, and you can change directions. Good things about this fruit is that it's decent for medium to long range, and it's also pretty good for grinding bosses. And since it only costs 250 belly, it's a really affordable price for the first C players. The pretty bad thing about this fruit is that almost every single ability can be easily dodged with Flash Step. But overall, still a pretty decent fruit in my opinion. Okay, so now on to the falcon fruit, and the falcon fruit is a beast type blast fruit, and it costs a total of 300,000 belly or 650 robux from the blast fruit dealer. It's an uncommon fruit, and its stock chance and spawn chance are completely unknown. The Z ability is called plumage. It's when the user has a semi-transformation, growing a pair of wings on their back, and it also boosts the user's defense and making the air jump go much higher. The X ability is called Wind Burst, and the user launches a blast of wind, flapping their wings and the attack goes in the direction where the user is looking. The C ability is called Bone Crusher. This is when the user charges at an enemy and just slams them into a floor, dealing a decent amount of damage. And the V ability is called Soaring Talons, and this ability locks the user in place, dealing damage several times. And this move is pretty decent for combos for first seed players. And finally, we have the F ability, which is called Flight, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You literally just become a falcon, like the fruit says, and you can just fly wherever you want. Obviously, a good thing about this fruit is that its mobility is really good. It has a lot of attacks that launch you forward. But a big downside to this is that it's really bad for grinding, and you need really good aim to actually make it useful in PvP. But overall, for being the cheapest beast fruit in the game, I think it's alright. Okay, so next up is the Ice Fruit, and the Ice Fruit costs a total of 350,000 belly, or 750 from the Blast Fruit dealer. It's an elemental fruit and its rarity is uncommon. It has a 15% chance of being in stock and a 14% chance of spawning. 
And this fruit is one of the few fruits in the game that also has an awakening. And did you know that the ice fruit is the only fruit in the game that literally has three different passive abilities? Since it's an elemental fruit, you can't get hit with opponents unless they have their hockey activated. The next one is called Frostwalker, which literally lets you walk on water by freezing it. And the third one is called Ice Trident, where you basically just get a free trident that you can use for whatever you want. Okay, so the first ability is called Ice Spear, and you just shoot a bunch of small ice projectiles. It's similar to the Flame Fruit, but obviously they're made out of ice. The next one is called Ice Surge, and this is where you spawn a bunch of ice spikes, and this ability deals a decent amount of knockback and a good amount of damage to players, and this ability also breaks observation, which makes it pretty good to use in combos. The third ability is called Ice Bird, and this is basically where you shoot a bird at someone, and it freezes the player that's hit. You can actually control where the bird goes, but you need really good aim to do that. And finally, we have the V ability, which is called Glacial Esport. It just forms a bunch of crystals around, and if a player is standing inside this, they get frozen for a good amount of time, leaving them completely open to attacks. The really good thing about this fruit is that since it's an elemental and it has a sword as its passive ability, it's really good for leveling up, especially for first and second C players. But a bad thing about this ability is that when you use the Glacial Esport ability, you can't do any damage until the opponent completely defrosts. And this fruit also takes a good amount of energy to use, especially when you try walking on water. Overall, with the three passive abilities this has, it's a really good fruit. And you should definitely get your hands on it. Next up is a sand fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 420,000 belly, or 850 robux. This fruit is also an elemental fruit, and it has a 15% chance of being in stock, but only a 3% chance of spawning randomly. And this is also one of the few fruits in the game with an awakening. The first ability is called Desert Sword, and this is where the player creates a burst of sand in front of themselves, and launching up anybody that's hit into the sky. The second ability is called Desert Funeral. It's basically where you trap the player inside a huge ball, pulling them into the air and crushing them. The C ability is called Sand Tornado, and this is where the player creates a really small sand tornado that launches the player into the sky, dealing a pretty decent amount of damage. The V ability is called Heavy Sand, and the player creates a ball of sand in their hand and shoots it at their opponent. This attack has high knockback and does a pretty good amount of damage to the enemy. And finally, we got the Movement ability. And this is where the player turns their legs into sand, allowing them to fly at a slow pace. A really good thing about this fruit is that when it's awakened, it has really insane combo potential. And because of its stuns, it's also really good for killing bosses. But a bad thing about this fruit is that you die twice as fast in water. And keep in mind, when you use this fruit's awakened abilities, it also lags your computer quite a bit. So make sure you're running on a pretty good PC before your game just crashes mid-fight. So next up on the list, we got the Dark Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 500,000 belly, or 950 Robux. It has a 15% chance of being in stock, and an 8.5% chance of spawning in-game. This fruit also has an awakening, and it costs a total of 14,500 fragments to fully awaken. So the Z ability for this fruit is called Dark Rocks, and this is really similar to the Flame Fruit's first ability. It's basically the same thing, but it's made out of darkness instead of fire. The next ability, which is the X ability, is called Black Spiral. And this one has a 40 mastery requirement, and it creates a black hole on where the user's cursor is, trapping anybody that's caught in it. The C ability is called Black Hole, and this one spawns a black hole, but this time on the floor, and it causes damage to anybody that gets trapped in this. Next up is the V ability, and this one is called Dark Bomb, and it has a 110 mastery requirement. It creates a huge orb of darkness above their head that they can charge to whatever level they want and it drags any nearby targets inside, dealing a huge amount of damage. The really good thing about this fruit is it's known in the community as one of the best stun fruits in the game, making it really useful for combos, especially if you're really good at PvP. But a pretty bad thing about the unawakened version of this fruit is that it can only do ground fights, so if you're fighting against someone that can fly, then you should probably run away. Whee! Next up is the revive fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 550,000 belly, or 975 robux from the block. Fruits dealer. This is an uncommon natural fruit that has a 10% chance of being in stock and an 8% chance of spawning. So the Z ability for this fruit is called Possession, and basically you launch your soul in the direction that you're looking at, and then you automatically get teleported to where your soul goes. The next ability is called Soul Ruler, and the user unleashes a green mist with the shape of a skull around themselves, causing an explosion and stuns enemies within range. The C ability is called Resurrection. 
So if this move is equipped and the user just ends up dying like you literally lose all of your health, you will get resurrected with 50% of your original health. And for dramatic effect, it also transforms you into a skeleton. And the F ability is called Wandering Soul, and for this one, the user's soul leaves their body, being able to fly around for a short amount of time. But the user's normal body is left behind, and they can kind of be attacked and return to their original body. A really good thing about this food is it pairs really well with the Soul Cane because of its semi-quick attacks. Another plus one is that it can freeze and stun opponents, giving it a really good combo potential. But overall, a pretty bad thing about this food I would say is that it, all of its abilities are really close range so if you're fighting someone from far away then it's probably not a fight that you should be taking. Okay, so moving on to the next one, we got the diamond fruit, and this is a natural type blocks fruit that costs 600,000 belly, or a thousand robots from the blocks fruit dealer. And a pretty cool thing about this fruit, it's one of the two fruits in the game that has a sparkling effect in its physical form. This fruit has a 9% stock chance and an 8% chance of spawning. So first up, we got the Z ability, and this one is called Encrust, and this one is in the fruit's name, you literally turn yourself into a diamond. And next up is the X ability, called Beaming Tackle, and this one is pretty simple, you just tackle an NPC or player that's next to you. The C ability is called Diamond Hail, and you fire a lot of shards from your hand, and the amount of shards that you fire depends on how long you hold the key for. The V ability, it's called Solar Flare, and this is where you release a huge blast of light, which blinds nearby enemies. Hmm, this kind of seems like a light fruit ability to me, what do you guys think? Good thing about this fruit is that it has really good damage resistance, so it can tank bosses and really high level players attacks. And it's also pretty decent for sword mains. And the C ability requires a good amount of accuracy to hit it, so if your aim is bad, then this is probably not the food you want to be using. Okay, so now onto the light fruit. The light fruit is an elemental type blocks fruit that costs 650,000 belly or 1,100 robux from the blocks fruit dealer. And this fruit has a 20% chance of being in stock and only a 13% chance of spawning in every hour. And this fruit is probably one of the best fruits that you can get for the first seed. Because similar to the ice fruit, it also has a passive ability that makes it really good for grinding. Keep in mind, this fruit also does have an awakening, which costs a total of 14,500 fragments. So the first ability is called light. Ray. And this is similar to the fire fruits ability, you just kinda shoot small beams of light in the direction of your cursor and it deals a decent amount of damage. And the X ability is called Barrage of Light, this is where it just TPs your character above and then as long as you hold the key down, it just spams a bunch of light abilities exactly where you're aiming. But it's pretty inaccurate. Next up is Reflection Kick, you kinda do zigzag teleports and then you slam yourself into the floor and hopefully that's where your enemy's standing. The V ability is called Skybeam Barrage and this is where you can choose an area to launch the attack and it basically just hails down a bunch of light meteors on the circle. And finally we got the movement ability, and this one is called Light Flight. And this is the fastest traveling fruit in the whole game. But keep in mind, once you start using the Light Flight, you can't really change direction, unless you have the fruit awakened. It's really good for players that are starting off, and it has pretty high damage for the first seed making it a fruit that's good for grinding and also for PvP. This is a pretty cool thing that I didn't know about the life fruit. The lower your health is, the faster your life flight ability will fly. So if you're literally 1 HP, the fruit should be a lot faster than what it normally is. Okay, so moving on, we got the robber fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 750,000 belly, or 1,200 robux from the blast fruit dealer. It has a 13% chance of being in stock, and only a 7.1% chance of randomly spawning. And this fruit also has a really unique passive ability. You basically have immunity to the rumble fruit, electric, the pole first form, and all guns in the game, even if the user has hockey activated. And did I mention you also have a second passive ability? This one's called Pistol, and it's your Mouse 1 attack. If you click Mouse 1, you kinda just punch the air. Moving on, we got the Z ability, and this one is called Cannon. And once you release the ability, the user springs their arms back, dealing a huge blow to the opponent in front of them. And the X ability is called Smash. This is where you kinda just stretch your foot into the air and just slam it into the floor, dealing a good amount of damage and pretty decent knockback. The C ability is called Rush. This is where you lock a user in place and deal a huge amount of punches to them. And the amount of punches you do depends on how long you hold the key for. Next up is the Transformation. When you transform, you start releasing steam off your body. It makes all the other abilities deal more damage and get a lot faster. Finally, we got the F ability, which is called String Shot. And basically what you can do with this is you can launch yourself into players or using inanimate objects, you can launch yourself across the map. Really good thing about this fruit is when it's in its transformation, it has really high damage output and really decent combat potential. And every single one of its moves has an area of effect, making it good for fighting multiple people at the same time. 
And since this fruit's abilities and the transformation are really good, that means that when you don't have your transformation equipped, it, it makes the fruit kind of bad. But overall, it's still a really good fruit and one of the coolest fruits in the game. Okay, so moving on, we got the berry fruit. And this one costs a total of 800,000 belly or 1,250 Robux. And the stock chance is only 8%, with the spawn chance being 7.8. The first ability is called Barrier Wall. You just fire medium slash rectangle that acts as a barrier, and no matter how much damage someone does to it, you cannot break it. But it does have a time limit and it despawns after that. Okay, so the X ability is called Surprise Attack, and this is where the player teleports to their cursor and spams down into the ground, dealing a good amount of area damage. The C ability is called Barrier Prison, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You just encase your opponent in a barrier prison, and you just constantly deal damage to them. And no matter what they do, you cannot escape this ability until it's over. Next up is the V ability, and this one is called Barrier Towers. You just summon 5 large barriers in front of you that slams into the ground, dealing huge amounts of damage to anyone that gets caught in it. Finally, we got another pretty unique movement ability. This one is called Stairs, and basically what it does is that as long as you keep holding down the key, it keeps producing stairs in front of you, and if you keep walking on them, the range you can go is infinite. It's a really good fruit for defending, and that's what it specializes in. And since it's good for defending, it's also really good for trolling. Since the barriers are indestructible, you can kind of trap people in it if you do it correctly. A bad thing about this fruit is that it's not recommended to use this against NPCs, because it's kind of bad for group attacks, but you can probably use it against bosses. And another bad thing is that most of its moves are really slow and they're pretty easy to dodge. So this is not really the ideal fruit that you want to be getting. Now moving on we got the magma fruit and this one costs a total of 850,000 belly or 1,300 robux from the box fruit dealer. This is a rare fruit that has a 10% stock chance and only a 7.3% chance of spawning in game. And this fruit is probably one of the best for sea beast hunting, which gives you a lot of money. Did I also mention this fruit has an awakening, which costs a total of 14,500 fragments. This one, similar to the ice fruit, has a really cool passive ability in its awakened form, which just lets you walk on water by creating magma blobs under you. And obviously, since you're literally made out of lava, you're immune to all lava that's placed around the map. Okay, so the Z ability is called Magma Clap, and this is where the player creates two huge hands on their back, and you kind of just clap. If a player gets caught in between, it deals a good amount of damage. The X ability is called Magma Eruption, and it creates a Magma Eruption under them, dealing a good amount of damage and knockback. The C ability is called Magma Fist, and this is exactly what it sounds like, where you can aim and shoot a huge fist out of your hand, dealing a good amount of damage and leaving a blob of magma that stays and deals damage for a good amount of time. The V ability is called Magma Meteors, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It creates three huge meteors that will launch exactly where your cursor is pointing. But keep in mind, you do need 140 mastery for this magma floor and this one you, you kind of just transform into a small blob of magma and if you go underneath people like this you can deal a lot of damage to them but keep in mind they can also deal damage to you you are not invincible good thing about this fruit is that it's extremely versatile due to its many passive abilities and it's one of the best fruits for grinding the whole of blocks fruits only second to the buddha and also this fruit is not really that specialized for pvp as it is a grinding fruit now we got the Quake Fruit, and this is a natural type Blocks Fruit that costs 1 million belly or 1,500 Robux from the Blocks Fruit Stealer. And this is the first legendary fruit that we got on this list. It has a 6% stock chance and a 6.4% chance of spawning in game. And this is also a fruit with an awakening that costs a total of 17,000 fragments. And the Z ability is called Quake Punch, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You kind of just punch the air, and if there's a player standing there, you deal a good amount of damage. The X ability is called Quake Wave. It sends a huge shockwave in the direction you're looking at. And if a user gets hit by this, they take a good amount of knockback and their screen shakes really rapidly. The C ability is called Quake Erupt. And basically what this does is exactly where the player is standing, it kind of creates a quake eruption into the sky, launching people into the sky and dealing a good amount of damage. And finally, we got the V ability, which is called Dual Tsunami. And this is an S tier ability and it's literally impossible to dodge because it just spawns in two huge tsunamis that completely engulf where you're pointing at. It's basically guaranteed to hit who you want it to hit. The really good thing about this ability is obviously that it's really specialized towards PvP and deals a good amount of damage. And it's kind of hard to miss these abilities since they have really large hitboxes. Bad thing is that you have to awaken the fruit to maximize its abilities completely. Don't get me wrong, I mean even the unawakened version is really good, but if you want to maximize its potential, you have to awaken it. 
Next on the list is the butter fruit, and the butter fruit costs a total of 1,200,000 belly or 1,650 Robux from the Blocks Fruit Stealer. This fruit has a 5% stock chance and a 6.6% chance of spawning in game, and it also has an awakening which costs a total of 14,500 fragments. The Z ability is called Transform, and it's basically where you just transform into a Buddha. The X ability is called Impact, and this is exactly what it sounds like. You kinda just impact the floor with a huge ball of energy. The C ability is called Buddha Leap. You just leap, and once you hit the ground, you deal a good amount of area damage. Buddha Explosion is kinda similar to the self-destruct move of the Bomb Fruit. You just release a huge blob of energy from exactly where you're standing, dealing a huge amount of damage to players standing in your area. Really good thing about this fruit is, like I said before, it's literally the best for grinding raids in the first, second, and third C. And if you combine Sharkman Karate with it and Hockey, it just becomes unstoppable. A pretty bad thing about this fruit is that you have to be in your transformation to use all of its abilities. So if you're in a free-for-all battle against other players, you will probably become the target if you transform. Next up is the Love Fruit and costs a total of 1,300,000 belly or 1,700 Robux from the Blast Fruit Stealer. It has an 8% stock chance and a 7.75% chance of spawning randomly. And this fruit also has a pretty unique passive ability. Basically, when you do damage to someone with this fruit, it makes the other player fall in love with you, making them do less damage to you temporarily. So first up is the Z ability, which is called Hard Shot. You just charge up a hard bow, kind of like Cupid, and you just shoot it to exactly where you want. The X ability is also kind of similar to this. You shoot a bow, and it locks to above the player's head. And as long as they're standing in the circle it spawns in, it keeps doing a huge amount of damage to them. The C ability is called Irresistible Attraction. It creates a huge circle where the user is standing. And once it releases, any player that's standing inside the circle gets a bunch of damage dealt to them. Next up is the V ability, which is called Best of Friendo, and what this ability basically does is it spawns in a friend from your friends list to fight for you. Isn't that pretty cool? Finally, we got the F ability, and this one is called Flamingo Ride, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You literally just spawn in a flamingo, and you can fly on it. You can use the other abilities of this fruit while you're flying, and if you have the Best of Friendo move equipped, it, then your best friend gets on the flamingo with you. The really good thing about this fruit is that all its moves cast very quickly and they have really less startup time. And the Flamingo Ride can be used a lot for sky camping, especially if you're fighting against fruits that don't have aerial abilities. But this fruit is kinda useless in PvP due to its bad hitboxes and its abilities are kind of easy to dodge. Out of every fruit on this list, I would say by far this is probably the one that's least worth it. Because it costs so much money. You serious? Next up on the list, we got the spider fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 1,500,000 belly or 1,800 robots from the Blast Fruit Stealer. It only has a 4% chance of being in stock and a 5.7% chance of spawning. And this fruit also has an awakening, which costs a total of 17,300 fragments, making it a really expensive fruit to awaken. The Z ability is called Spider Wrath. You kind of just shoot out air slashes, kind of like a sword's ability, making it pretty cool. The X ability is called Multi String Attack, and this spawns in a bunch of strings above where you're aiming, deals a decent amount of damage, and also stuns them for a brief amount of time. The C ability is called Overheated Sniper, and this is where the player shoots a thick rope made out of condensed strings, which deals a huge amount of damage depending on what you're aiming at. The V ability is probably one of the coolest abilities in the game. It's called Ultimate Thread. It creates multiple strings that are all covered in the aura color of the user, and once activated, pierces anything in its way, dealing a huge amount of damage and it has a really good range. The F ability is called Spider's Path, and this one is probably one of the coolest movement abilities in this game. And it makes you feel and look just like Spider-Man. Good thing about this fruit is that it has really high damage, and its abilities are best used for killing bosses, and has really insane combo potential. But if you want to use this fruit in PvP, you have to have really good aim, so if you have bad aim, this is probably not the fruit for you. And next on the list, we got the Phoenix Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 1,800,000 belly or 2,000 Robux from the Blast Fruit Stealer. This fruit has a 3% chance of being in stock and a 3.05% chance of spawning in game. This fruit also has an awakening which costs 18,500 fragments, making it the costliest awakening on this list so far. So, first up, we got the Z ability, which is called Cannon. And the user charges up a flaming bow that's released forward and does a decent amount of damage. It's similar to the Gravity Fruit's X ability. And the X ability for this fruit is called Regeneration Flames, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You just cover yourself in flames and heal a lot of your health back. The C ability is called Fast Kick. 
And this launches a really overpowered kick in the direction of where the user is looking, dealing a good amount of knockback and damage to anyone that gets hit by it. Next up is the V ability, which is called Full Transformation. And it's exactly what it sounds like. The user completely transforms themselves into a phoenix. And this is probably one of the coolest transformations I've seen in Blocks Fruits. Next up, we got the movement ability, which is called Hybrid Flight. And you kind of just flap your wings and fly around. Pretty cool thing about this is you don't have to be transformed to do it. A good slash bad thing about this ability is that its V1 and V2 abilities are really similar. The only major difference is that the V2 deals way more damage. It's not really that good of a fruit for grinding because it deals a bunch of knockback on most of its attacks. So if you're trying to grind NPCs, this is probably not the fruit for you. Next up, we got the door fruit. <coughs> I mean, the portal fruit. And this fruit costs a total of 1,900,000 belly or 2,000 Robux from the Blast Fruits dealer. And it has a 7% chance of being in stock with a 6.8% chance of spawning randomly. The portal fruit has a passive ability, and when you use your mouse button, it does a portal jump, launching you in a direction that you're looking at. The C ability is called Portal Dash, and you can use this either as a movement ability or if you dash into someone, it just sends them through a stream of portals and then it finally slams them into the floor, dealing a good amount of damage and stuns them for a second. The X ability is called Parallel Escape, and what this ability does is it takes you to another dimension, and when you're in this dimension, other users can't see you. It lasts a few seconds and it cancels the ability if you attack a user first. Remember before when I said the Light Fruit was the fastest in the game? Well, I kinda lied. The C ability for this fruit is called World Warp, and you can basically teleport anywhere you want in the map. You just have to click the ability and click the location you want to teleport to. The V ability is called Dimensional Rift, and what this does is it sucks players into an alternate dimension. And this alternate dimension lasts for as long as the user's energy lasts. If you're a user with max energy, then it's kind of overpowered. Next up is the F ability, which is the movement ability, and what this does is it basically creates two portals. And once you walk into one, you obviously come out of the other end. But keep in mind, if non-allied players or NPCs try walking to this, they will take a decent amount of damage. It's probably the best mobility fruit in the whole of Blocks Fruits, and it's really good for escaping any type of players. And a lot of its attack patterns are completely unpredictable, making it kind of a bit decent in a fight, but it's not really a PvP-based fruit. And this fruit also does only mediocre damage at best, so it's not recommended, unless you just want to get to locations really fast. Next up on the list, we got the Rumble fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 2,100,000 belly, or 2,100 Robux from the Blocks Fruit Stealer. It has only a 2.25% chance of being in stock and a 2.31% chance of spawning in. This fruit can also be awakened, which costs a total of 14,500 fragments. The Z ability is called Rumble Dragon, and this is where the user shoots a swirling lightning dragon that explodes exactly when it hits someone. The X ability is called Sky Thunder. You just summon a bunch of thunder to exactly where you point at, and it hits whoever's in the radius. The C ability is called Sky Beam. Summons a giant lightning beam from the sky, and it levitates the target when hit, and it does a really good amount of damage and a pretty decent stun. The V ability is called Thunder Bomb. The user gathers a bunch of thunder clouds into a big black ball, and you can launch it exactly where you want, and it deals a lot of damage depending on how long you charge it for. The F ability is called Lightning Dash, and this is kind of just a ripoff of your normal dash ability, except it's just a bit faster. Overall, not that good of a movement ability. Good thing about this fruit is that it has really long stuns and pretty good mobility since its dashes are much faster than the average ones. But compared to other movement abilities, it's not that good. And it has really high mastery requirements. I mean, you literally need to have 250 mastery to use all the abilities. That's pretty high if you ask me. Okay, so moving on, we got the paw fruit. And this fruit costs a total of 2,300,000 belly or 2,200 robots from the Blast Fruit Stealer. This fruit has only a 1.9% chance of being stuck and a 2.8% chance of spawning randomly. The first ability is called a Heavy Paw, and it's kind of just shoot a small paw out of your hand and it just goes in a straight line and it has really good range. But it's kind of hard to aim, so make sure you got your mouse ready. The X ability is called Paw Barrage, and it's kind of the same ability as the Heavy Paw, except you shoot a bunch of them, similar to the Flame Fruit's first ability. The C ability is called Paw New. This is where you spawn in a huge paw in your hand and you can shoot it exactly where you want and it deals a huge amount of damage where it lands and flinging anybody that's hit high into the air. The V ability is called Torture and for this one you choose a large long range red pulsating paw that blinds opponents and deals damage over time. 
and this ability also breaks observation, so it's a really good ability. The F ability is called Self Repel, and basically what it does is you teleport backwards really far, and you kind of just spring back to the place you were. Not sure what the point of this ability, but I guess it is what it is. <laughs> The really good thing about this fruit is that it's really good for PvP and bounty hunting and it does a huge amount of damage. But on the downside, you need really good aim and precision to hit your targets. And you also need really high mastery requirements to use this. But it's not recommended for beginners because it's kind of hard to use. Next up, we got the Blizzard fruit. And this fruit costs a total of 2,400,000 belly or 2,225 Robux. It only has a 1.8% stock chance and a 1.2% chance of spawning in-game. The first ability is called Snowflake Shuriken, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You kinda just shoot Shuriken that's made out of snow at your player, and it explodes on impact and does a pretty decent amount of damage. The X ability is called Whiteout, and you just send a tornado flying in the direction you're looking at that just stuns enemies and sends them flying away. The C ability is called Howling Wind. And this one is also Tornado, but this one spawns in place and it holds enemies in air, stunning them and preventing them from using any abilities. Next up is the V ability. This one is called Blizzard Domination, and this is just a better version of the Ice Fruits ability. And similar to the Control Fruit, if the enemies in this dome, they will be heavily damaged, and it pulls every enemy inside here and, and does not let them escape. The F ability is called Tornado Flight, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You just fly around in a tornado, and if you run into enemies, it just slings them out of the way. But well, you should probably not be using this one for PvP. This ability has a lot of stuns, making it really good for farming bosses, and it also has really good combo potential. But a bad thing about it is that since a lot of its abilities knock the players away, it's kinda hard to use in combo. So I don't really recommend this fruit for beginners. Okay. Next up, we got the first mythical fruit on this list, the gravity fruit. It costs a total of 2,500,000 belly or 2,300 robots from the box fruit stealer. It has a 1.7% chance of being in stock and a 1.6% chance of spawning. The C ability is called gravity push. It creates a strong gravitational force in front of them, launching enemies backwards and displacing the ground in front of them. The X ability is called Gravity Obsidians, and in this one, a user creates a glowing crater beneath themselves and makes gravity push down on all enemies trapped inside. The C ability is called Meteor Pitch, and for this one, you just shoot a purple beam upwards, and the meteor slam down just like how you should slam the subscribe button right now. The V ability is called Meteor Rain, and this is similar to the Light Fruits ability, but instead of light, it's real meteors, and they deal a huge amount of damage where they spawn in. The F ability is called Boulder Flight, and this one is pretty simple. You just summon in a rideable boulder that lets you fly in your desired direction. The good thing about this fruit is that it has really decent damage, and it's pretty good for stunning. It's really bad in air combat, though. You would think that meteors would be good in the air, but I guess they're not. Now finally we got the fruit that everyone has been waiting for, the dough fruit. The dough fruit costs a total of 2,800,000 belly or 2,400 robux from the box fruit stealer. It has a 1.4% chance of being in stock and a 1.3% chance of spawning. And to fully awaken this fruit, you need a total of 18,500 fragments. The Z ability of this fruit is called Fried Dough, where you just kinda spawn in a missile and you just shoot it. If you actually angle it right, a funny glitch kinda happens. The player you shoot it at actually rides the missile. For the X ability, we got Sticky Dough, and what this does is that you just bring out a huge whip type of thing, you capture the opponent that you're fighting against, and completely slams them into the the ground in that direction. The C ability is called Carved Dough, and you kind of spawn in a roller donut, and once you let go of it, you launch yourself from the sky and deal a huge amount of damage. The V ability is called Restless Dough Barrage, and this is a really cool ability, and it gets even more overpowered when awakened. It locks your opponent in place, not letting them move or anything. As long as you're holding down the key, it just keeps punching them for a huge amount of time, dealing a lot of damage. Next up, we got the F ability. This one is called Roller Donut, and you just roll around on a donut. And once you're food is awakened, you can actually roll this donut on water at straight up walls, making it really overpowered. The really good thing about this fruit, it's known for its PvP abilities when it's awakened. The abilities when awakened look really cool and they make really satisfying noises. The only bad thing about it is that it's really difficult to awaken and it takes a lot of time since you need to kill the Dough King before you do it. And he's pretty hard to kill. 
Okay, so next up on the list, we got the Shadow Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 2,900,000 belly, or 2,425 Robux from the Blobs Fruit Dealer. This is also Mythical Fruit, and it has a 1.3% chance of being in stock, with a 1.1% chance of spawning randomly. So its Z ability is called Somber Rebellion. So what it does is you basically launch yourself in the direction of your cursor, and when you come into contact with an enemy, you hit them a bunch of times, and then you fly up into the sky. A decent amount of damage, but you need pretty good aim to use it. The X ability is called Shadow's Nest. You shoot a bunch of small shadow bombs towards your enemy and they explode on impact. And they deal a bunch of decent damage and a good amount of knockback. The third ability is called Nightmare Leash and it's similar to one of the God Human's abilities. You slam yourself into your enemy and as long as you hold the key down, you punch them rapidly for a good amount of time, dealing a lot of damage. The next ability is called Corvus Torment, and this is similar to one of the Dark Fruits abilities. You basically turn your body into a black hole and then making a huge explosion and dealing a lot of damage to people next to you. And then finally we got the F ability, which is called Umbarrage, and this is basically the Flame Fruits Fly ability, but it's in its own shadow form, which looks pretty cool in my opinion. The good thing about this fruit is the amount of damage it deals, it's, it's literally one of the most powerful fruits in block fruits, and it's really underrated in my opinion. Pretty bad thing is that it has really high mastery requirements, you need a total of 300 mastery just to be able to use every single ability. But overall, it's still a really good fruit. Moving on, we got the Venom Fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 3 million belly, or 245 robux from the Blocks Fruits dealer. This fruit has a measly 1.2% chance of being in stock and a 1.1% chance of spawning in. Okay, so the first ability for this fruit is called Poison Daggers, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You basically just fire a bunch of Poison Daggers towards your enemy, dealing a good amount of damage and a bit of knockback. The second ability is called Noxious Shot, and this one just shoots a swarm of Venom bullets towards where you're aiming at. Three in total, and it deals a lot of damage, and a bit of the Venom stays behind, dealing a bit of extra burn damage. The third ability is called Toxic Fog, and this basically gives you a huge aura that surrounds you in a bunch of toxic smoke. And when you walk next to anybody, they take a good amount of damage. Next up is the V ability, and this one is the transformation. And this looks really cool, turning you into a three-headed venom monster, which buffs every single one of your abilities, making you way more overpowered. Finally, we got the movement's ability, which is called Serpent's Wrath. And this one basically just lets you fly around in a venomous serpent. And once you crash it into somewhere, it leaves behind a big blob of venom that deals a good amount of damage. The really good thing about this fruit is its transformation. Once you activate your transformation, all of your attacks get buffed by 62%. And the best thing about this fruit is that it specializes in two things, air and ground combat, so it doesn't matter where your opponent is. But a pretty bad thing about it is all its moves have limited range. And this is probably one of the hardest fruits to get in the game, so if you want it, then, then good luck getting it. Next on the list is the control fruit, and this fruit costs a total of 3,200,000 belly, or 2,500 robux from the Blocks Fruit Dealer. It has a total 1% chance of being in stock, and a 1.9% chance of spawning randomly. Okay, so the Z ability of the control fruit is creating the dome, it's called control area. And depending on how long you hold the key down, that's how big the dome that you create is. The X ability is called Levitate, and both of these abilities have only a one mastery requirement, so you get both of them as soon as you unlock your fruit. And what Levitate lets you do is move around objects inside the dome you create, which is really overpowered. You can move buildings, trees, and basically whatever's inside. Even boats. The C ability is called Echo Knife, and this is a pretty cool ability. And this is similar to one of the God Human's abilities. It basically locks your user in place, not letting them move, and punching them several amounts of times. Next up is the V ability, and this one's called Gamma Rush. This is where you launch a green projectile towards where your cursor is, and if it hits an NPC or player, that means they're locked in, and you'll begin hitting them numerous amount of times, and they just have to sit there and take all that damage. There's no way to escape it. Next up is the F ability, and this one's called Teleport. And basically, wherever you click, you instantly teleport to inside the dome that you create, and this ability is really good. The really good thing about this fruit is that its levitate ability has the lowest cooldown out of every ability in the whole game, making it really overpowered and spammable. But a bad thing about this fruit is that you can only use its abilities when you're inside the dome that you create, so if you're outside, then this fruit is kind of useless. But then again, you can just create a new dome whenever you want. Moving on, we got the Spirit Fruit, and the Spirit Fruit costs a total of 3,400,000 belly, or 2,550 Robux from the Blocks Fruit Stealer. This fruit only has a 1% chance of being in stock and a 0.75% chance of spawning randomly. So, the first ability is called Frostfire Grasp. You just jump on a cloud and fly towards the position of your cursor. Then you summon a spear which damages and stuns people. The X ability is called Wrath of Ra. 
And this is where the user sends a demon spirit towards the position of their cursor. And once it hits a player, it turns into a pillar of fire, damaging people and launching five fireballs into the air. The C ability is called Wrath of Shu. You quickly dash to your cursor's location and create a bunch of ice around the user and then it freezes your opponent and causes a constant amount of damage to them. The V ability is called End of Times and for this one you use both the buddies, the fire one and the ice one, to shoot two huge beams to your cursor, stunning your enemy and dealing a butt ton of damage. The F ability is called Sky Ruler and for this one you hop on one of your buddies and you can just fly them off to wherever you want. Really good thing about this food is every single move that it has is an area of damage which means you do splash damage to every enemy me that you hit so it's really good for grinding and fighting off groups of people but a pretty bad thing about it is that these moves are kind of slow compared to all fruits so it might not be the best for a fight overall still a really overpowered fruit and one of the coolest fruits in blocks fruits Next up, we got the dragon fruit, and this is a beast type blocks fruit, and it costs a total of 3,500,000 belly, or 2,600 robux. It has a 1% chance of being in stock, and a 0.7% chance of spawning randomly. And a really cool thing about this fruit is that it has the biggest transform model in the game, I mean this dragon is really huge. So the first ability is called Heat Wave Beam. You just shoot a huge beam of energy and wherever you're aiming it does a bunch of damage. The next ability is called Dragonic Claw. You coat your hand in flames and then you rush forward towards an enemy and if you grab them you can drag them along the floor dealing a bunch of damage. Next up is the C ability and this one's called Fire Shower. And it's similar to one of the Light Fruits abilities. You just jump high up in the air and then you can shoot fireballs wherever you aim. The V ability is the Transformation. This is where you turn into a literal dragon, and it's one of the coolest transformations in Blox Fruit. The F ability is called Dragon Flight, and this one is pretty self-explanatory. You're just flying, just like a dragon does. You even grow a pair of wings. Two really good things about this fruit is that it's really good for PvP, and it's really good for mobility. Pretty bad thing about this fruit is that it has really high mastery requirements. To use all the abilities of this fruit, you need a total of 350 mastery, making it pretty difficult to grind out. But it's definitely worth the transformation. Next up, we got the fruit that you all have been waiting for, the leopard fruit. And this fruit costs a total of 5 million belly, making it the most expensive fruit in Blox Fruits, as well as 3,000 Robux from the Blox Fruits dealer. This fruit has only a 0.3% chance of being in stock and a 2.5% chance of spawning in game. So, the first ability is called Thing Revolver, and it's exactly what it sounds like. You kind of just shoot a bunch of bullets out of your hand, and they deal a lot of damage and knockback. The next ability is called Spiraling Kick, and you kick the air so hard that it sends sends out a beam of air going towards your enemy and if they get caught in it they get dragged along with it until it explodes somewhere and it deals a lot of damage and it also disables observation making it really good. The C ability is called After Image Assault and this is where the user teleports a bunch of times in the curse's direction then lets out a roar that deals a bunch of damage and knockback but if you're on the ground while you use this attack then you just smash it exactly where you are. The V ability is obviously the transformation and you basically just transform into a leopard which gives you a buff of 10% damage reduction and has an area of damage roar on every 4th click making it really overpowered and you also get an extra mouse 1 ability. The F ability is called Body Flicker and this is basically where you teleport in the direction of your ability and you also deal a good amount of damage, it's kinda like a mini flash though. The best thing about this fruit in my opinion is that it's the second best PvP fruit in this whole game, second to the Awakened though. And its transformation is also really overpowered because of your M1 attacks and the fourth one which literally breaks observation making it really overpowered. A pretty bad thing about this fruit is that once you transform yourself into a leopard you can't use any combat styles as well as swords, you have to stick with only the abilities of the fruit. Did you know that back in the day blocks fruits actually used to be circles instead of squares? And did you know that the max level was only 300? These are 22 things that only old blocks fruits players remember. Okay, so some of you old players might remember that back in the day the blocks fruits in the game actually used to look a little bit different. I mean they were still block shaped but they just looked like low textured versions of the fruits that we have now, making them look way worse. But did you guys know that actually way before that, that the fruits actually didn't used to be cubes? They used to be normal circles and they would actually look like proper fruits but the reason they changed this is due to copyright because it's way too similar to the anime but in my opinion they look really cool as blocks and it definitely fits the theme as a roblox game 
Okay, so this was a glitch that only OG players will remember. It literally let you get two fruits at the same time, and this glitch was just really overpowered, and that's probably the reason why they patched it. So how it worked was that you should equip the beast type blocks fruit and then eat it, and then you activate the transformation of that fruit, then you can go to the blocks fruit dealer, and once you purchase another fruit, you instantly get all its abilities, so you can use the abilities of a different fruit while in a transformation. And if you do the combinations with the leopard fruit and awakened dough, they just get really overpowered. I mean, imagine having the two best PvP fruits in the game merged into one. That's way too overpowered for anybody's liking. Inventory and blocks fruits. But did you know back in the day, you used to actually have a thing called the treasure inventory. The treasure inventory allowed you to store blocks fruits and game passes. You could only store one of each fruit or two if you bought the game pass. And unlike the inventory, the treasure inventory was a physical chest on the floor that you would literally have to walk to to access. And once you put a fruit in the treasure inventory, you could no longer drop it. Really similar to the inventory we have now. And when you wanted to trade fruits with other players, you had to have stored them in the treasure inventory to be able to trade them. Overall, I definitely think that the inventory is better and the treasure inventory was probably not the best choice the devs made. Okay, so this is a change that a lot of you OG players might not have noticed. I'm obviously talking about the old startup menu. And if we look at a side-by-side -side comparison of these, they almost look identical, but there's one major difference. And if you look over to the pirate side, you can see that on the current version, there's just a normal pirate. But in the old version, it's actually one of the bosses from the pirate village. It's actually the clown boss, Buggy, from the pirate village. And this is a pretty small change, and I'm not really sure why they changed this, but there's actually another change as well. If you look a little bit down, down, you're gonna notice that in the old version there is no fast mode that means you have to play your game on completely maxed out graphics and that's definitely an improvement for you guys out there that play on phones or pretty bad computers so overall this is a pretty good change there's three different categories of fruits and blocks fruits and they are natural elemental and beast beast fruits are the ones with transformations the elemental fruit is where your body literally turns into the element and the natural fruits are just ones with really weird powers but did you know that before in the old stages of blocks fruits they actually used to have have different names. The natural blocks fruits were actually called Paramecia, the elemental ones were called Logia, and the beast ones were called Zoan. And you might be wondering, why were they actually called these instead of what they are today? And the reason for that is because they had the names similar to the One Piece anime, and later on they were changed because of copyright reasons. Overall, this is a pretty decent easter egg, and it's kind of hard to notice. Okay, so this change is probably the most important out of every change on this list, and did you guys know that before, in the early stages of the game, blocks fruits actually wasn't called blocks fruits, it was called blocks piece and this was also another change that was changed because of copyright but they changed it to blocks fruits because the game majorly focuses around the fruits and the startup page looked really weird imagine loading up your game one day and seeing the game called blocks piece instead of blocks fruits pretty weird did you know that the max level of blocks fruits actually used to be only 300 compared to the level today which is 2450 that's literally more than 2000 levels that they've added to the game the max island for the game was literally the coliseum it was the last island and once you reach you couldn't go anywhere else you literally finished the game there was no second c and no third c overall i'm really glad that they added more islands to the game because it would be kind of boring if you just finished the game once you reach the coliseum did you guys know that the server size for blocks was actually only used to be 10 players back in the day can you imagine how peaceful it would be back then? You could literally do all of your quests in peace and there would be a very low chance that someone else had the same quest as you. Really helpful. Not sure why they changed this though. Back in the olden days of Blocks Fruits, there were actually only four different game passes and the Blocks Fruit notifier was not one of them. So every fruit that spawned on the map, you would literally have to manually find it and pick it up, making it so that not many people would get random fruits. And I'm pretty sure that's the reason they added this game pass. It's really useful for tracking down your fruits and I'm not sure what I would do without. It. Okay, so this is a pretty small change as well. Did you guys know that when Observation Hockey first came into the game, it looked completely different to what it looked like now? I'm gonna be showing you guys a side-by-side -side comparison of what it looked like. And as you can see, it feels way more realistic in the old version, if you ask me. And I'm really not sure which one I prefer. I actually think I like the older one more. Okay, so Blocks with Devs, if you're watching this, please revert this change. I like the old one more. Okay, so this is a really major change, and I'm pretty sure it's one that a lot of you did not know. So did you guys know that back in the day in blocks fruits guns actually used to do 40 percent less damage for context that's almost only half the damage that they do and the guns are still useless in the game imagine how useless they would have been back then and would there even have been a reason to buy guns i mean you might as well just stick to swords and fruits because they're the best in the game if you ask me okay so this is a really massive change and it's one that a lot of you are instantly going to realize if you played this old blocks fruits version i'm obviously talking about the water if you take a look on screen right now the water used to look 
like way different to what it looks like now. And the water, it just looks way more still and it's a lot more blue. Which makes it a bit more realistic, but I don't really think this fits the Bloxford style. The water back then didn't even really look like it was flowing, compared to the water now, which looks like it's flowing with no problem and looks way more fluid. Overall, I definitely like the new water way better than the old one and I'm really happy they changed it. So now I'm gonna be talking a bit about Poneglyphs, and if a lot of you don't know what they are, I wouldn't be surprised. The Poneglyphs were large stones that were put into the game in update 10 or 12. Not really sure exactly which one, because the devs added this as a secret easter egg. One of the Poneglyphs was located in the Snow Mountain, and the other one in the Cave Island. Both of these islands are on the second sea. Not much is known about these structures, but rumors spread that it was a hint about an awakening for the rubber fruit. But at the end of the day, they just happen to be easter eggs. But sadly, it's no longer in the game. Okay, so this next one is definitely one of the most game-changing ones on this list. I'm talking about the sky jump ability that you all know and love. So did you know back in the day, you could actually sky jump an infinite amount of time as long as you had the energy for it. And this just made the sky jump ability really overpowered and the devs wasted no time in nerfing this. Currently in the game, you can jump a total of 10 times if you're the human race and it varies depending on what race you have. But back then it was infinite so you could literally jump from the bottom of Skylands all all the way to the upper part and that's just really overpowered and probably one of the coolest things ever okay so this was something that used to be in the game that made it really overpowered for buddha users so everybody knows that once you transform with the buddha you just walk about the speed as a normal person not giving you any extra speed benefits but back in the day buddha users used to get a 60 percent speed boost once transformed to give you context to how op that is that literally makes your player way faster and everybody already knows that the buddha fruit is the best grinding fruit and blocks fruits and adding this to it would just make it way more overpowered imagine finding someone and you're just running circles around them and they cannot keep up really op if you ask me and it's probably something that should not have stayed in the game okay so this is a pretty small change but it would be pretty big for you pay to win users out there back in the day if you wanted to buy a fruit with robux you would actually have to wait for it to be in stock this made it pretty hard for youtubers to get the fruits they needed for videos stuff like the leopard dough and other really overpowered ones but now you you can just buy with robux whenever even if it's not in stock and it comes in really handy a lot so i'm really glad they changed this okay this is something that affected a lot of players that were new to the game back in the day in blocks fruits you actually did not have any spawn protection so if you were outside the beginner island that means anybody would be able to kill you at any time and there wasn't even a level cap not fun is it so this is a really good change and i think it prevented a lot of players from quitting Okay, so everybody knows that there's four different types of sea events in Blocks Fruits. There's ship raids, sea beasts, rumbling waters, and mirage island. And you guys should be really familiar with these. But in the old Blocks Fruits, you actually had absolutely no sea events, making it way harder to grind fragments. And this is a really cool change, and it really shows how much Blocks Fruits has developed through the years. Okay, so this is something that a lot of you might already know. Back in the day in Blocks Fruits, there were actually no fragments. But what you might have not known is that there was an item called a rare artifact. And a lot of you might be wondering, what is a rare artifact? The rare artifacts were an item that were dropped by the Darkbeer raid boss. And you would get it 100% of the time. And they actually served as a substitute for fragments. You could buy a bunch of different things with them. You could buy Dragon's Breath, you could buy the Kabucha Gun, a stat reset point from Plokster, and a race change from Norp. But they were removed in update 11. Overall, I think this was really good for the game and fragments are definitely way better. Okay, so everybody knows about the Bloxfruits gotcha. It's literally one of the best NPCs in the whole of Bloxfruits. But did you know back in the day, the Bloxfruits gotcha did not exist. You couldn't roll for random fruits. And the first time he was added was during a winter event. And the community liked him so much that they made him a permanent addition to the game. In my opinion, the Bloxfruit gotcha fits Bloxfruits really well. And it gives new players a way to get good fruits without having to grind super hard for them. But there's also a huge amount of luck to it. But in my opinion, that's what's good about it. Okay, so this one is not as old as the other ones on this list. I'm talking about the Christmas event. So during the Christmas event, when you killed NPCs, you would actually get candy. And there were a bunch of different NPCs that used this. And you could trade in these candies to get a bunch of other stuff. For Santa Claus, you could trade them in for the elf hat, the Santa hat, and the sleigh. The magic elf gave you 15 minutes of double XP, stat refunds, and race rerolls. And also the greedy elf, which gave you fragments in return. So candies were really good currency, but it's a shame they weren't a permanent addition to the game. Overall, I think they were pretty good, and they definitely fit the Christmas event. 
Okay, so everybody knows about the portal fruit in Blocks Fruits, but did you know that back in the day it actually used to be called the door fruit? But the major differences about this were the way the abilities were styled. And the reason the fruit was changed from a door fruit to a portal was because of copyright. The first ability was called Spinning Door, and this is exactly what it sounds like. You kind of just dash forward spinning and you do a bit of damage to the player in front of you. The next ability was called Dimensional Door, and this is where you enter the door dimension and no one can see you or hit you, but the moment you do damage to someone else, you completely exit out of it. The next one was called Door Gateway, and this basically just lets you teleport anywhere you want on the map, exactly the same as the current portal ability. The next one is called Hallway, and this is where the user opens a portal in front of them and then exit where their cursor is pointing. It's kind of similar to a flash step, but a way cooler version of it. There were also a butt ton of glitches with it. But overall, it's a really good fruit, and if it wasn't for copyright, I definitely think it's better than the portal. In this video, I'm going to be giving you guys a guide for every single awakened fruit in Blocks Fruits, as well as some secret tricks for each fruit. Okay, so first of all, we have the easiest raid in the whole game. I'm talking about the Flame Raid. And the Flame Raid is known by everybody in the community as the easiest raid that you want to do if you want to grind out some fragments. But the Flame Fruit itself is probably one of the worst awakened fruits in the game. It costs a total of 14,500 fragments to fully awaken your Flame Fruit. But to be fair, it does make the ability look way cooler. So for the first ability, it's called Blue Fire Bullets, and this just changes the Unawakened version's abilities to blue, so it looks much cooler. And the second ability is called Prominence Burn, and for this one, you just shoot out a burst of damage, and this is a medium range attack, so it's gonna come in handy for PvP. And now we got Flaming Vortex, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's kind of like a pillar made out of fire, but you have to be really close to the player if you want to use this one. And now we got Hell's Core, which is just a copy of a Spirit Bomb from Dragon Dragon Ball, so this one is pretty cool in my opinion. And then finally, we got the F ability, the movement ability, and this one's called Rocket Flight, and basically what this does is it increases the speed of the normal flight mode for the Flame Fruit, making it 10 times better to use. Really good things about this fruit is that every single attack literally does over 4,000 damage when the fruit is awakened, and this fruit is really decent for PvP, but not that good for grinding. And every single one of the Flame's awakened abilities break observation, making it even better for PvP. But a bad thing about it is that its V move is really predictable and anybody can dodge it using flash step. I mean, all you have to do is click one key. Okay, so now we got the Awakened Ice Fruit, and to fully awaken the Ice Fruit, it also costs 14,500 fragments. And the Awakened abilities for this fruit are just really cool. First up, we got an ability called Cold Storm, and this ability is just a better version of Ice Shards. It literally spawns in a frozen tornado. And the second ability is just a better version of Ice Surge, making it cover way more distance and doing way more damage. And you won't believe what the ice bird turns into. It literally turns into a frozen dragon, making it super epic. And the next ability is called Absolute Zero, and it freezes every enemy that's close to you and stuns them for a certain amount of time, making them unable to move. And then, when you awaken the ice fruit, you also get a special F ability, and this one's called Ice Skating, which literally just lets you skate around on land, which is really OP and makes you move 10 times faster. Good things about the awakened version is that it makes it really easy easy to farm levels. And when it comes to the trident for the ice fruit, you don't need to upgrade your sword points to do damage. You just have to upgrade your fruits, basically giving you a free sword. One bad thing about this fruit is that when you use the absolute zero ability, you cannot use any other ability in the game and you have to wait for it to completely defrost. And now we have the awakened sand fruit. When awakened, the sand fruit is really good for grinding and has a high combo potential for bounty hunter, but the fruit only costs 420,000 belly, making it a really good choice for bounty hunting. And this fruit also takes 14,500 fragments to fully awaken. And when awakened, the first ability of the sand fruit is called Desert Blade, and this just shoots out a bunch of pillars from underneath the floor, dealing high amounts of damage to players in the area. The next ability is called Sand Coffin, and it basically raises a ball of sand into the air, and if any players are standing nearby, it just buries them in the sand. The third ability is called Sandstorm, and this is similar to one of the flame abilities. It's just a sand tornado that pushes players high up into the sky and deals a buttload of damage. The fourth ability is called Deep Sand, and this is basically, you kind of shoot a sand bullet and it just flings your enemies away and deals a huge amount of damage. And last of all, we got the movement ability, which is called Tornado Flight. This is similar to the Flame Fruit's flight ability. You kind of just fly around and you can control exactly where you go. A really good thing about this fruit is that it has excellent combo potential when awakened. So it's good for bosses. So when you're on those boss quests or you're just grinding out bosses, this is definitely a fruit you want to choose from. 
A bad thing about it is that you take double damage in water, unless of course you have the shark v2 or v3. The X move from the sand fruit only targets one player, so if you're fighting against two players and you attack one of them, the other one can just deal a buttload of damage to you while you're standing still. But overall, the sand fruit is also really decent and it's definitely worth the cheap price. Now we have the awakened dark fruit, and now we're really getting into the juicy ones. To completely awaken the dark fruit, you also need 14,500 fragments. But keep in mind that this fruit is so much better wow. than the other fruits on this list so far. So all of the awakened abilities for this fruit are just really cool. Starting off with Dimensional Slash, this one is exactly what it sounds like. It shoots off a long-range blade attack, dealing huge amounts of damage to players standing in the way, and also literally cuts through everything, even buildings. And the second ability we have it is kind of similar to the Spider Fruit. If you hold it down, it just does repeated amounts of damage to players in your way. And the third one is called Endless Hole, and what this one basically does is it just traps all enemies standing next to you when you use it. It creates a circle around you and everyone standing close to you takes huge amounts of damage and gets stunned. Next up is World of Darkness and this one is the coolest ability by far. If you hold it down it creates a huge black ball above your head and when you throw it to the ground it shatters the floor and deals a buttload of damage to any player standing there. And the movement ability is called Ghastly Step and I'm not gonna lie this is just a rip off of Flash Step. So if you have Flash Step unlocked with the movement ability for this fruit you basically have to flash steps, which is pretty cool. The really good thing about this fruit is it has a lot of stuns, making it really good for people that play fruits and swords. So once your enemies are stunned, you can just jump in there and slash them to death. A bad thing about this fruit is that the Awaken X and C abilities do not deal a huge amount of damage unless they're held down, but in the time you're standing still, players can literally demolish you. And you definitely don't want to be using this fruit for any long range battles because most of its abilities are close to medium range. But don't forget that the fruit is kind of overpowered at close at medium range, so that's kind of a good thing about it. And now we got the light fruit, the literal fastest fruit in the whole of blocks fruits. And to completely awaken this fruit, you also need 14,500 fragments. When you awaken your light fruit, the passive ability changes from a light blade to a light spear, and the light spear just looks so much cooler. And the first ability turns into a divine arrow, and basically what this is, is you pull out a bow made out of light, and it charges three times, and then you can shoot three whole arrows to do damage to your enemy. The second move is called Hand of the Emperor, and this is just Barrage of Light, which is the unawakened version of this fruit, and it just upgrades the ability and takes it to another level. And Reflection Kick changes into Light Speed Destroyer, and it basically just makes this kick 10 times cooler. Even the effects get so much better, just look at this. Sky Beam Barrage changes into Wrath of God, and let me just tell you, Wrath of God is just so much cooler and is so much better version of this. The radius of the circle to deploy the beams gets much bigger, making it a lot easier to hit your target. So one bad thing about the initial light fruit is that when you start flying with the light flight, you nope. cannot change your direction. But once you awaken your fruit, the ability changes into shining light, you can literally change the direction of the way you fly, which makes this movement ability one of the best in the whole game, and I definitely recommend you use this if you want to get to places really fast. It also has really high damage and a good amount of long range attacks, making a hybrid fruit which is good for grinding and PvP. But one good slash bad thing about this is that if you don't have good aim then you cannot use this fruit to its full potential, taking away a bit of its ability. But overall it's just a really good fruit and the fastest fruit in the game so you definitely want to get your hands on this one and next up we have the awakened magma fruit and this is one of the most popular awakenings in the whole of blocks fruits this fruit also requires 14,500 fragments to fully awaken and a bonus of this fruit is obviously lava immunity you literally don't take damage from any lava around the map so once the fruit is awakened your first move changes from a magma clap to a magma shower and let me just tell you this looks really crazy and it deals a buttload of damage and it also leaves these little lava pools around which also deal extra damage to players. And next up is Volcanic Assault. This is kind of like your Q dash ability but just so much better and with a nice touch of magma to it. The Great Magma Hound is an ability that just sends a ball of lava flying at your opponent and it leaves a little puddle behind dealing immense amounts of damage. Next up we have Volcanic Storm which is also a really cool ability and really good for dealing out damage. And then finally we have the movement ability which is Beast Ride and it's exactly what it sounds like. You just fly around in a magma skull and once you get off it you can crash the skull somewhere making it a good movement ability and a pretty good ability for dealing damage. Good thing about the awakened magma is that this fruit is extremely versatile due to its many passive abilities. I mean one of them is literally letting the player walk on water that's just OP and it also has the highest damage 
damage out of every fruit in the game if you add the puddle damage. And on top of that, it's an elemental fruit, making it really easy to grind with. And the main drawbacks of this is when the fruit is not in its awakened version, so you want to awaken this fruit as soon as you have the chance to. Now we're getting into the more expensive awakened fruits. We have the quake fruit, and this fruit costs 17,000 fragments to fully awaken, making it the costliest on this list so far. For the first ability called Fatal Demolisher, it deals this world-breaking ability and it just looks super sick, like I mean it literally cracks the world itself and launches your enemy really far back. And next up we got Air Crusher, which shoots a huge ball of electricity towards your opponent, sending them flying in any direction you choose. But keep in mind, rubber users are immune to this, so you probably don't want to use it against them. Next up we got Spatial Shockwave, and what this does is, if you hold down this ability, you can make everything around you take damage. It's literally spatial, and this move is really good for grinding because you can deal damage to multiple targets at once. Now we got Sea Quake, the most expensive ability, and this one is just crazy. I mean, it literally launches four tsunamis towards the player, making it really overpowered and really difficult to dodge. So it's basically guaranteed damage. Good things about this fruit is it has really large hitboxes, so it's almost impossible to miss the players you're fighting against. And every single one of its moves breaks observation hockey, making it way more valuable in PvP. And it has medium mastery requirements, meaning it, you won't have to sit there grinding for ages to unlock all the abilities of the fruit. A bad thing about this fruit is that it has no movement abilities, so if you're using this fruit, you probably want to have something else to move with. And if you don't run on a really good computer, keep in mind this fruit literally shakes your screen when you use every single ability, so it's gonna lag a lot. Next up is the best fruit for grinding in the whole game. I'm talking about the Awakened Buddha. And this fruit costs 14,500 fragments to fully awaken. And the first Awakened ability basically makes your Buddha transformation literally three times bigger, making you a literal giant. It makes you bigger than some buildings. I mean, I would call that gigantic. The next ability we have is Heavenly Impact, and this basically just smashes the ground and creates a huge light, dealing immense amounts of damage to players that are on the spot. Next, we got a Light of Annihilation, which is just a Kamehameha, and it looks really cool. And you can aim it anywhere from medium to long range, and it deals a buttload of damage. Next up, we got Twilight of the Gods, and this one just looks really crazy. It takes you into the air, and you just start dishing out damage to everything nearby. You can literally demolish players in five seconds with this move. And finally, we got the movement ability, which is called Retribution Dash. And this one is kind of decent for movement ability. I mean, it's literally just a dash. But a bonus to this is that if you dash into a player, you literally pick them up, making them unable to do anything and just slam them into the ground. And the thing about this fruit is that it's extremely versatile. It works perfectly even if you're a sword, fruit, or combat style main. And even though this fruit specializes in grinding, I mean, it's also pretty decent for PvP. But you probably want to stick to not using this fruit for PvP because... I mean, look at your transformation, man. You're gigantic, making you a literal glowing target for other players to kill. And your hitbox also increases, meaning you literally 800% bigger than a normal player, so you're definitely gonna get targeted if it's a free-for-all. And did I also mention that this Buddha fruit has no combo potential, so it's not really that good for PvP at the end of the day. Now we have the Awakened String Fruit, <coughs> Spider Fruit. And the Spider Fruit costs 17,300 fragments to fully awaken, making it a pretty expensive expensive fruit. The first ability is actually similar to a sword attack. It deals a consecutive amount of slashes towards your enemy and this is probably better off used at close range because the slashes don't really go that far. Next up we got Silk Prison which is basically what it says. It just boxes your enemy in a Silk Prison and deals some damage to them. Not really that good for damage but it's pretty good for immobilizing your enemy. Next up we have the C move which is called Eternal White and this one just looks really crazy. It basically pulls out a bunch of huge strings from the floor and just rams them into wherever you're aiming. It. And these deal a really good amount of damage, so this is definitely going to be useful for PvP. Next up is Heavenly Punishment, and this ability is just really cool because it actually copies your hockey color. So if your hockey is rainbow, this ability literally becomes rainbow, which makes it really cool. In the direction that you're looking in, it just starts spamming your enemy with multiple attacks, and they literally just have to stand there and take all that damage, making it really good for PvP. Last up is the movement ability, Spider's Highway, and this ability literally makes you like Spider-Man. I mean, 
and you literally just swing around on webs, making it really cool to watch. But movement-wise, it's pretty decent, but it's definitely not the best in the game. A really good thing about this fruit is that it deals a huge amount of damage, and most of its abilities have stun attacks, so it's going to be really good for combos. But one downside to this move is that if you're running on a bad computer, you probably don't want to use this, because all of these moves cost immense amounts of lag to you and the player you're fighting. So if you don't have that good of a PC and you run into a spider fruit user, I mean, it's just better to run away. Next up, we have the Awakened Phoenix Fruit, and this fruit costs 18,500 fragments to fully awaken. And the transformation for this ability looks really badass. So the first ability, which is called Cremation Cannon, is kind of similar to a Quake ability. It just shoots a spiraling ball of blue flames towards your enemies, and it leaves behind a little bit of fire, so you even get that extra damage. Next up is Blue Flames, and this ability kind of looks like a blue light fruit. In a selected area, it just brings up a glowing orb, and it just does a bunch of damage. Next up is Flame Exodus, and this ability is one of the coolest by far, and it's probably gonna be laggy for you guys out there with a bad PC. So, once you dash into a player, it just sends a spiral up into the sky and slams them back down into the floor, dealing a huge amount of damage and looking really cool at the same time. Next up is Blazing Plumage, and this is the transformation ability. Your avatar basically just transforms into a flying phoenix, and you can fly around wherever you want, and the transformation looks really sick. And now we have the movement ability, which is called Swift Flight, and you get this automatically when you transform. It's just a pair of phoenix wings, and you can fly around wherever you want with them. And we also have a passive ability for this fruit, which is kind of similar to the portal fruit. In whatever direction you click, you just dash and lunge into a player and deal a buttload of damage. But the main abilities of the fruit are just much better, so you probably just want to stick to using those in PvP. A really good thing about this fruit is that it's really hard to kill a player using this fruit. And the reason for that is that every phoenix player has an ability called regeneration flames and these things are just really OP and they regenerate a player's health even better than the angel abilities making it one of the most overpowered healing fruits in the game and this is also really good for bounty hunting or if you're getting bounty hunted I mean you can just heal back the max health in a matter of seconds and the moves for this fruit also have a really low cooldown compared to other good fruits making the ability spammable a bad thing about this fruit is that you probably don't want to use it to grind because all the abilities that do damage knock the enemies back really far that means it's going to take a bunch of extra time to grind with and did i also mention that this fruit recently got a really big nerf so it's not as good as it was i mean this fruit was broken before this when flying the speed is now reduced from 33 percent to 50 percent making it so much slower now we have the rumble fruit and this fruit costs 14,500 fragments which is cheap considering how good this awakening is so for the first ability the player shoots out a bunch of electricity at their opponent stunning them and immobilizing them and dealing a great amount of damage and the second ability is a literal thunderstorm just raining down a bunch of lightning around the player and the third ability is a concentrated amount of lightning and lightning repeatedly strikes the exact same place multiple times and this does a huge amount of damage and for the fourth ability, we got another spirit bomb ripoff, and it's just what it looks like. You create a ball of energy above your head, and then you can slam it into wherever you choose. And last of all is the movement ability, and this is just a better version of the dash ability. You just zip across the map in a really fast speed, making it really hard for players to hit you during PvP. Bad thing about this fruit is that rubber users literally take no damage from it, so if you see a rubber user, you need to run immediately. All of the stuns for this fruit make it really good, and all the moves perfectly complement each other, making them really good to use side by side. And did I also mention this fruit is really good for boss grinding, even better than the dark fruit. A bad thing about this fruit is that to unlock all the abilities, you need so much mastery, like you're literally gonna be sitting there grinding for ages. And some of the Rumble's abilities have really long startup times, so every time you use an ability, you're in a suspended animation for a few seconds, making you really vulnerable to attacks from other players or NPCs. So you wanna make sure you have good cover before you start charging up an ability. Now we got the Awakened Fruit that you've all been looking forward to seeing, Awakened Doe. And this fruit costs 18,500 fragments to fully awaken. And the fruit has a special chip needed to start the raid, and the only way you can get this is by defeating the Doe King, making it the hardest fruit to awaken in the whole game. So the Awakened Doe Fruit does have a passive ability, which is called Doe Fist, and it's exactly what it sounds like. A bunch of Doe Donuts just appear and they just punch your enemy, pushing them back and dealing a bunch of damage. Next up is the Missile Jab, and a 
my opinion, the good thing about this ability is the way it sounds. It's just so satisfying and really nice to listen to. And it also deals a good amount of damage. Next up is the Pastry River, and this ability has two forms. If you're not standing in the air and you're standing on the ground, then what it does is it just brings up a huge spike of dough and deals a good amount of damage to people in the area. But if you are midair, then it's a bit different. It just spawns in a bunch of dough donuts and just punches your enemy into the floor. But the ability where you're standing still and it brings up a huge spike is definitely better than the air one. Next up is actually a really cool ability. Basically what you do is you drive a donut into a player and once you let go of the ability, it grabs the player, spinning them around and slamming them into the floor and the effects for this ability just look really sick. Next up is the V ability, and this is the hardest ability to get. And this is just a dope barrage, but so much cooler, and it looks so much better as well. Compared to the unawakened version of the fruit, this looks really crazy. And now we have the movement ability, which is called Scorching Donut. And what this does is it just lets you roll anywhere you want. And when the fruit is awakened, you can even roll on water and directly up walls, making it really good for movement. A really good thing about this fruit, it's literally the best fruit in the game for PvP. The only thing that even comes comes close is the leopard fruit and this is one of the few fruits in the game that literally lets you travel by water and this fruit also has immense combo potential i mean you can literally just spam a bunch of your moves at a player and they will take a lot of damage without even being able to react to what's happening and when you use the sea ability even when you're in the animation you can't take any damage no matter what they hit you with and if you're looking to gain bounty this is definitely the fruit to use and really the only downside to this fruit is how much effort it takes to awaken other than that it's literally the best fruit in the whole game. In this video, I'm going to be telling you about 15 things that you should not do in the second C. And these tricks are guaranteed to make your block switch experience 10 times better. Okay, so this is a mistake that a lot of you might be making and it really slows down your progression of the game. I'm talking about awakening useless fruits. And the reason this is really bad is because the fruits altogether are useless. I mean, do you really want an awakened flame fruit when you can awaken fruits like the Buddha, Magma, or Doe? Your money and time are way better spent on awakening fruits that you're actually going to use in the future rather than fruits you just currently have and you're going to dispose of later. Doing raids also takes a lot of time and you have to pay money or a fruit to the scientist every single time you do one. So you want to make sure you're using your time properly because if you're not then it's time you can spend doing something else that will be much more worth it. Okay so now this one is something that's also really important. Doing raids that you can't do. What I mean by this is when a lot of you get into the second C, the first thing you want to check out immediately is the raids. And I do not recommend this for people that have just entered the second C and the reason for this is because they're extremely difficult to do if you're a beginner. I mean, there's a reason you have to be at least level 1100 to do them. But some of you just might start them with your friends that are already that level. And I completely do not recommend this because keep in mind, you have to pay money every single time you do a raid. And if you lose the raid, you just lose everything. You literally get nothing except for the XP when you kill the people, which is definitely not worth it. I would say, depending on which fruit you want to awaken, wait till you're at least 1100 to 1500 to start doing raids. Because if you don't, then it's probably not the best use of your time. Okay, so this is something I still see a lot of players doing in the second C, and it's grinding with a bad fruit. And what I mean by bad fruit is a fruit that's not suited towards grinding. I mean, there are fruits that are really good for PvP, but they're just not it for grinding. Grinding fruits for the second C include the Light, Ice, Magma, and Buddha. And these are some really good fruits that you definitely want to get your hands on as fast as you can. I know some of you really want the dough fruit, and if you get it, you're probably going to eat it. But I'm telling you guys, don't equip the dough fruit until you finish the game, because the the dough fruit is a PvP based fruit and it's really good for PvP and completely unmatched. But when it comes to grinding, it's not really the best choice. Most people that do PvP are endgame players that are just bounty hunting because they've completely finished the game and they pretty much have nothing else to do. So make sure you get your hands on a grinding fruit as fast as you can. While we're on the topic of grinding fruits, I'm gonna tell you guys about a fruit that you should definitely get your hands on as soon as you get into the second C. I'm obviously talking about the Buddha fruit. And the reason for this is the Buddha fruit is widely known as the best grinding fruit in the whole of blocks. Fruits. The reason for this is when you transform with the Buddha Fruit Z ability, the range that you can hit people gets much bigger, so you can literally hit them without taking any damage. The Buddha Fruit costs a total of 1,200,000 belly, or 1,650 Robux from the Blocks Fruit dealer. It only has a 5% chance of being in stock, but a 6.6% .6 chance of spawning normally. And if you want to awaken this fruit, it costs a total of 14,500 fragments. 
But the main ability that you want to keep your eye on is its Z ability because it's the best one and pretty much the only one you need. This is a mistake I see a lot of noobs making. It's not getting Sharkman Karate in the second C and going to the third C without it. And the reason for this is that Sharkman Karate is the best fighting style if you want to grind and get higher levels in this game. I know some of you might be saying that Superhuman and God Human are way better, but hear me out. The reason that Sharkman Karate is better than these two abilities, only for grinding that is, is because it doesn't have a delay between its third attack. So every attack, you can keep hitting people without any pauses in between. If you take fighting styles like Superhuman and God Human, you're going to notice a slight delay and that's the reason it's worse for grinding but when it comes to pvp superhuman and godhuman completely demolish sharkman karate so if you're looking to level up and grind the game then sharkman karate is definitely what you want to be getting and the way you get it is by heading over to this guy called dairock the sharkman on the skull island and then doing his quest and once you're done with that you can buy it from him but keep in mind you can only do this quest when you actually reach the skull island so you pretty much have to do the whole second scene without sharkman karate okay so this one is not as big as a deal as the other ones mentioned but it's something Something that's still pretty important. And I'm obviously talking about people that don't get the Sidim Rifle. The Sidim Rifle is a rare gun and it does poisonous damage over time. And the way you get it is by destroying the factory, but keep in mind you only have a 20% chance of getting it, unless you have double drops enabled. It has a total of two abilities. The Z ability is called Spiky Bomb and the X ability is called Acidic Smoke. And the reason you really want to be getting this gun is because of its ability to break instinct. I know most of you watching are not gun mains, but even if you're not a gun main, you definitely want to get this. And level it up a bit to unlock the abilities. It'll come really handy in PvP, even if it literally does no damage. This is something I see a lot of people still doing, and it's doing your raids without the Buddha fruit. And there's a reason the Buddha fruit is considered the best grinding fruit, but did you know it's also the best fruit to grind raids with? And the reasons are really similar. It's because of its ability to hit people without them being able to hit you. It makes it really good for raids, especially when you get to higher levels, because they get way more powerful, so you can still be a pretty low level while doing high level raids. And once you awaken your Buddha, you can do this pretty cool trick while you're grinding raids you can literally walk off to the edge and just stand on the water and you won't drown and you can do this trick on every single raid to regenerate your health and once your health is back you can go back to fighting and you can just repeat this process over and over until you kill the boss overall a pretty cool trick and it's something that you guys definitely want to be doing in the second scene. okay so this is a mistake i don't see a lot of people making but i still see some do and this is grinding higher level bosses for boss drops if you just enter the second c and you just want to get some secret swords or weapons or any type of items some people just instantly go and fight bosses that they're not prepared to fight a really good example of this is the ice admiral and you definitely don't want to be fighting this guy if you just entered the second c and the reason for this is that he will completely demolish you he's literally one of the highest level bosses in the second c and you shouldn't be grinding him just to get some drops many people try and grind the ice admiral because you can actually get two drops from him what is the secret sword behind this wall that you need a key for and the next one is the secret room over here and it's definitely not worth it unless you have friends with you if you have friends then you can pretty much do anything if they're high enough level. Okay, so this is a common mistake I still see a lot of people making in the second C, and it's not upgrading your race. Like, you will not believe the amount of people I've just seen walking around with their race still in V1. And you want to upgrade your race to V2 or V3 as soon as possible, because the buffs it gives you are definitely worth the time it takes. So the way you upgrade your race to V2 in the second C is you head over to this guy at the mushroom, and you do his quest. But once you try to upgrade your race to V3, it's actually a bit different depending on what race you are. You have to head over to here where the diamond boss spawns and then there's a secret wall you can actually walk into and once you walk inside here you can talk to this guy and he gives you the quest and for this one you have to kill jeremy the diamond boss and vegeta and once you've killed every single one of these bosses you come back and talk to the guy and you should have your race v3 and the race v3 for human actually gives you a pretty good amount of buffs so it's definitely something you want to get your hands on you also unlock an ability called last resort and when you activate this depending on how low your health is you deal more damage this ability has a 20 second second cooldown and lasts a total of 5 seconds and in my opinion this is really good for PvP. This one is a pretty simple mistake but I still see a good amount of people doing it in the second C. So everyone knows that there's two different ways to start raids in the second C. One is by trading in a fruit and the other one is paying a certain amount of money. But people that grind out raids usually can't pay amount of money because you can only do that every 2 hours. Other option is to obviously just trade in fruits and I see so many people trading in good fruits to start raids but this is actually a pretty bad idea and definitely not worth it. The the reason for this is you can trade in any fruit, it doesn't matter, like you can trade in a dough fruit or a kilo fruit and they're both literally worth the same thing when it comes to this. So you don't want to be trading any fruit that's above rare in my opinion, or if it's a fruit you don't use, you should definitely trade it in. Like for example, if it's a fruit that you definitely know that you won't be using, like I mean no one's gonna use the kilo fruit, the spike fruit, the chop fruit, or other fruits that are pretty low tier. Okay, so this one isn't really that important if you have a 
good food, but regardless, it's something that you definitely want to be doing. You always want to get help on your raids, and I see a lot of people not doing this. I mean, it's literally free help, and everybody likes free help. Even if you don't have friends, you can go into many Discord servers and communities, and there's always people there that are willing to help. And speaking of Discord, you guys should check out my Discord server, link in the description. We're a really friendly community, and there's a lot of people willing to help you guys with raids. And at the end of the day, when it comes to raids, your rewards don't get split. You get a total of 1,000 fragments no matter what type of raid you complete. If there's 5 people, you still get 1,000. And if there's a total of 5 of you doing the raid, then that's 5,000 fragments earned versus the 1,000 fragments you just earned by yourself. And it's always good to help other people out, especially if it's in your own self-benefit as well. Okay, so this is something that I've seen every single person do, and I also made this mistake when I was still in the second C. It's always following your quest. Some of you might be saying, wait, Hans, how am I going to level up if I don't follow my quest? There are some quests that are actually kind of bad to do and slow down your progression of the game. When you're doing quests, you generally want to find quests that you can finish really fast compared to quests that give you a little bit more XP. A really good example of this is this quest giver next to the bridge. When you're doing the pirates quest in the town, the pirates are really next to each other and grouped up and they're really easy and really fast to kill. But when you switch over to the scientist quest here, they're really spread out and it takes way more time to kill them. And if you add up the time, you have to walk all the way back to the quest giver, take the quest and walk all the way back. And this goes for every single scene. You want to only be doing quests that are close to your quest giver and the NPCs are grouped together. And another good thing about this is it makes it really easy to group up the NPCs and if you have an area of damage attack, it makes it way faster for grinding. Okay, so this is a pretty simple mistake that I still see some people doing and that is leveling up your Buddha fruit. My hands, didn't you say the Buddha fruit was the best fruit for grinding? Yes, I did say that, but you actually don't need to level up the Butterfruit to make use of it. What I mean by this is you literally only need one of its abilities. You just need the Z ability, the transformation. And the reason for this is, like I mentioned before, the only thing you want from the Butterfruit is its increased range, which means all the other abilities don't matter. You don't even need to upgrade your fruit points. You can literally just put it all on combat and defense. I see a lot of people trying to unlock the other abilities of the Buddha, and I'm telling you guys right now, they're pretty useless. So if you want to save time and make your grinding faster, just make sure you're not doing this simple mistake. It wastes a lot of time. So this is a fighting style I know a lot of you guys probably missed out on the second C. I'm obviously talking about superhuman. And the reason that you want to get superhuman is because you can upgrade it to the best fighting style later. God human. You guys might be wondering, where do I actually get the superhuman fighting style? So all you have to do is head over to this island and then you'll find this secret little place that you can walk into. Once you go here, you can buy from this guy called the martial arts teacher and it costs a total of 3 million belly. But there's a bit of side quest that you gotta do before you get this. You have to have a 300 mastery on the electric fighting style, dark step, water kung fu, and dragon's breath. And obviously you need access to the second C as well. So if you guys have these requirements, this is definitely something that you want to keep your eye on. So next up, this one isn't as big as a mistake as the other ones on this list. It's rolling the blocks fruit dealer. You guys might be asking, wait, what? what? I thought rolling the blocks fruit dealer was good to get fruits. Well, it is and it kinda isn't. And the reason for this is because if you already have the fruit that you want, then it's kind of a waste to keep spending money on it. I mean, if you have the best grinding fruit, like the Buddha fruit, then you don't really want to waste money rolling, do you? Your money would be way better spent getting some other accessories, items, and fighting styles, like ones that are mentioned on this list. They're way better and your money will be better used on them, instead of just rolling for fruit and, let's be honest, 90% of the time you're getting the chopped fruit anyway, so it's already pretty much a big waste. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you 19 mistakes that you need to avoid making in blocks fruits. Okay, so this is a mistake that a lot of new players will make. It's thinking that every mythic fruit is always the best fruit. And well, in most cases, this could actually be true, but there are some rare and legendary fruits that are actually better than some mythical fruits. An example of this is comparing the magma fruit to the gravity fruit. The gravity fruit is a mythical fruit and it costs a lot more than the magma. But did you know that the magma fruit is actually overall a better fruit? And the reason for this is that it actually has an awakening and the gravity fruit does not. So that makes the magma fruit a lot better and it's also way more useful useful for grinding and PvP than the gravity fruit can ever be. So now you guys might be wondering, how do you actually tell which fruits are better? And what I recommend you guys to do is watch some videos and do some research on all the fruits, and then you should choose what fruit that you actually want, instead of buying a mythical fruit just because it's mythical. Okay, so this is something that a lot of new players do that's gonna tremendously affect how fast you level up. I'm talking about what type of fruit you grind with. In blocks fruits, there are two types of fruits. There's grinding fruits and there's PvP fruits. And normally you don't want to be using PvP fruits unless you have it as a permanent fruit or you've completely 
completely finish the game. And the reason for this is that PvP isn't really necessary in Blocks Fruits. What you really want to focus on is getting your level as high as possible. And to do that, you'll definitely need a grinding fruit. And two grinding fruits that I completely recommend are the Buddha and Magma. And the Buddha being the best grinding fruit in the whole game. So if you can get your hands on that, it'll definitely help you out. Okay, so this is a really crucial mistake and you want to make sure that you're not doing this. I'm talking about switching fruits. And what I mean by this is that switching the Blocks fruit that you use every time you feel like it. And this is a really bad thing to do. And the reason for that is when you switch fruits, you don't keep the same amount of mastery. Say for example, you had the smoke fruit activated and you had a 400 mastery on it. And then you eat the flame fruit. Then you start with the flame fruit mastery is zero. The mastery does not transfer over. However, if you eat the smoke fruit again, then you keep the same mastery you had. So make sure you're not switching your fruits because if you spend a lot of time getting a high mastery on a fruit and just decide to switch to a different fruit, it could be really wasteful. And I know it's really tempting to do this and I myself have done it a lot of times. But if your goal is to reach the highest level possible, make sure you're not doing this. Okay, so this is a mistake that I see a lot of people that are new to the game doing. So people will normally go roll fruits and then they'll just forget to store them and then you end up dying to somebody in PvP and just completely losing the fruit. And you might be thinking, this isn't that bad. I mean, losing fruits like the Chop, Spin, and Kilo isn't really something to be worried about, but imagine if a player had the Leopard or even Dove Fruit. And losing that could be extremely bad because those fruits are considered some of the best fruits in the whole game. Okay, so this is something that's really simple and I don't see enough people doing. I'm obviously talking about entering codes, and the reason for this is that you can get some really cool things from entering codes. Things like double XP and even stat reset points. And Blocks Fruits is still to this day releasing new codes, but keep in mind the old codes do go inactive. And the reason you want to enter in codes is because they're really simple to do and the payoff is definitely worth it. I mean, all you have to do is literally go to Google and search up Blocks Fruits codes and then you click on the first website that shows up. Pretty easy if you ask me. Okay, so this is something that I see a lot of new players doing. It's eating a fruit while you have fruits equipped. And this might seem a bit silly at first, but you have to realize that not every player that joins Blocks Fruits instantly knows how the game works. And some people might think that you can actually have two fruits equipped at the same time which you cannot. So if you're a new player to Blocks Fruits, make sure you don't accidentally do this, especially not eating a Kilo Fruit to replace a Dough Fruit. That would be completely unfortunate. Okay, so this is a really simple mistake and it's pretty easy to avoid doing. So a lot of new players, when they first take a look at the Blocks Fruits dealer, they're gonna look at a bunch of cool fruits, but a lot of them are not going to be in stock. So if you're a rich player and you have 5 million belly same, make sure you actually wait for a good fruit to come in, like the Leopard Fruit, instead of buying the best fruit that's currently in stock. And if you do this, you could end up buying a really bad fruit that you're gonna instantly end up switching from and if you keep doing that it's going to lead to wasting a lot of money that you could have saved to buy other fruits fighting styles or even swords okay so this is a mistake that a lot of new players might make I'm talking about buying everything, and what I mean by that is every single NPC that sells you something, people buy from, and this is definitely something that you don't want to be doing. The reason for this is because it takes a lot of money, and at the end of the day, not everything is worth buying. In my opinion, you should choose a playstyle to play the game with, and your main should either be a sword, combat style, or fruit. So if you're a fruit main, you definitely don't want to be buying new swords or even combat styles, because it kind of wastes your money. I mean, if you're a fruit main, you should probably save up for a better fruit. And then once you get the best fruit, then you can think about buying other swords or combat styles. Okay, so this is a really simple mistake and if you end up avoiding this, it could save you a lot of time. And this is something that I see a lot of people not doing. I'm talking about setting your spawn point. Setting your spawn point is something that you want to always keep doing. And the reason for this is that it literally lets you instantly teleport to where you have to be. So say for example, you're doing your quest on the desert island, but then you have to go leave the island for some unknown reason. If you have your spawn point set, then you can instantly teleport back to the island. But if you don't, you have to take a long boat ride all the way back to it and this wastes a lot of time that could be spent grinding so just make sure you guys set your spawn point okay so this is a really stupid mistake that people make and it's really similar to another one on this list i've seen a lot of people leaving the game with items in their inventory and i'm not talking about items like swords combat styles or guns that stay once you join back i'm talking about items like physical fruits keys and other boss drops and these are things that you definitely don't want to be leaving the game with and some boss 
boss drops could be really valuable, so make sure you actually use them before you leave the game. So if you leave the game after getting them, then that's probably not a good thing. Okay, so this is a mistake that I see a bunch of beginners making, and it's rolling the blocks with gotcha way too early. When you first start of the game, you definitely just want to advance using swords and combat styles. Or if you're lucky enough to get a pro player to give you a free fruit. Other than that, you definitely don't want to be going out of your way to try and get good fruits from the blocks fruits gotcha. You could end up wasting all of your money and not have enough money to buy the swords or combat styles that you actually need to advance in the game. But obviously, once you get a higher level, the blocks fruit gotcha is a really good NPC and you definitely want to use him to its full potential. Okay, so this is a mistake that I see a lot of rich new players making. And what I mean by rich is people that have a lot of spare robux to spend. And people like this just end up buying every single game pass as soon as they get into the game. And this is definitely something that you want to avoid doing. And the reason for this is that not every game pass in the game is actually worth buying if you're trying to level up as fast as possible. The two main game passes that you want to get are double money and double mastery. And the reason for this is that these are the game passes that are crucial to leveling up. Double money literally gives you twice the money that you normally get, making it way easier to buy anything that you want. Double mastery is pretty self-explanatory, and it literally lets you level up your swords, fruits, fighting styles, and even guns twice as fast. And the other game passes like faster boats, double drop chance, and dark blade aren't really worth buying. And when it comes to the fruit notifier, this is something that completely varies. If you're a rich Roblox player, then you should be able to buy the exact fruit that you want, so you technically have no need for the fruit notifier. So it would kind of be a waste to buy that. Okay, so this is a mistake that not a lot of people make, but it's still something that's really important that you have to make sure that you don't do. And I'm talking about upgrading useless items. Not many people know this, but there's actually an upgrade bench in Blocks Fruits. I mean, it's pretty much right there. You can't really miss it. And what it does is it lets you upgrade your sword or gun to a higher level, making it deal way more damage. And you definitely don't to do this for useless items. Imagine you try to upgrade the first sword that you got when you came to the game. It's a sword that you won't be using after like two days of playing the game. But if you have some really good swords, then they're definitely worth upgrading. Just make sure you don't upgrade the wrong stuff. It could waste a lot of time. Okay, so this is a mistake that's pretty easy to avoid, but I see a lot of people doing, and it's PvP. And you might be wondering why PvP is such a crucial mistake in Blocks Fruits. And the reason for that is that in Blocks Fruits, you actually have no reason to fight other players, unless you're max level. And the reason you don't want to be doing this when you're actually leveling up in the game is because it's a huge waste of time. Because think about it, you actually gain absolutely nothing from PvP except for bounty or honor. And that's something that's not going to help you in leveling up. And the reason for that is that your bounty and honor increases the damage that you do, but it's only towards other players. So you only want to do this if you're max level and a bounty hunter. But obviously, if other players try to fight you, you should definitely fight back because you don't want to just die, do you? Okay, so this is a really crucial mistake and you want to make sure that you're not doing this. I'm talking about upgrading your stats evenly. And you might be wondering why this is such a bad thing. To new players, it might seem like the right way to upgrade your stats. Just upgrade everything evenly. But this is something that's going to take away all of your damage output in the game because you're not actually going to be using every stat that you upgrade. When you play Blocks Fruits, you usually want to choose one category that you mean. Either it is being a combat main, a fruit main, a sword main, or a gun main. And you want to focus on the defense stat, the combat stat, and the other stat that you're going to be playing. And those are the only three stats that you want to upgrade in the game. And you might be wondering, why should I upgrade my combat stat if I'm a fruit main? And the reason for that is because your combat stat not only increases your combat damage, it actually increases your energy as well. And you're not going to get far in Blast Fruits if you don't have a lot of energy. Okay, so this isn't a mistake per se, but it's an NPC that you don't want to make the mistake of not using. I'm talking about the Abilities Teacher. The Abilities Teacher is an NPC that can be found inside the cave in the Frozen Village. And he sells you three really crucial abilities that you want to make sure you buy as fast as you can. The first ability is called Air Jump, which lets you jump in place 10 times. And this costs a total of 10,000 belly. The second ability is Aura. And this is something that you want to have if you want to advance in Blocks Fruits. It lets you do damage to elemental users and it also has a damage and defense buff. And this ability costs a total of 25,000 belly. And the third ability is called Flash Step. This literally lets your user teleport and it's not as important as the other two abilities, but it's something that you definitely want to get if you want to move around really fast. And Flash Step costs a total of 100,000 belly. So in total, all of these abilities cost 135,000 belly. So make sure you get your hands on them. That's pretty cheap. 
Okay, so this mistake is crucial to all you fruit mains out there. And I see a bunch of people doing this. It's searching for fruits without a fruit detector. And the reason this is bad is that you could spend a lot of time looking in various places on different islands. And searching for fruits without the detector is something that you don't want to be wasting your time on. And if you can't afford the game pass, you shouldn't be searching for fruits in the first place. Because they're really hard to find. Okay, so this is a mistake that a lot of new players make, and it's waiting for the boss to respawn. And the reason this is a mistake is most bosses in the game actually take 20 minutes to respawn, and those are 20 minutes that can be spent grinding other NPCs instead of just waiting for the boss. And even though the boss quest is the best quest that you can currently be doing, it's actually better to go back to an older quest, because it saves a lot of time and at the end of the day you get more money, XP, and stats. So this is a mistake that I see a lot of people making, and it's being a gun main. Don't be a gun main. This trick is gonna make you go from a noob to pro in PvP. And these are some weapons that you might be using wrong. These are 10 things that you're doing wrong in Blox Fruits. This is something that you guys are definitely doing wrong in the game. I'm talking about guns. And some of you might be wondering, how is it possible to be using guns wrong? Well, if you're a new player to the game, you might not know this. The only real purpose in the game that guns serve is to break observation. Which means that they're only useful for PvP. And I see a lot of new players using guns to grind. First of all, a thing that's bad about it is that guns only have two special abilities. Meanwhile, things like swords and fruits have way more. Make sure the only thing you're using it for is PvP and not grinding under any circumstances because that's going to slow down your progress of the game by a lot. Okay, so this is something that I see a lot of new players making a mistake of, and I certainly did when I first started off. I'm talking about stats. You'll notice every time you level up, you actually get three stat points that you can upgrade whatever you want with. You can choose from different things such as your melee, defense, sword, fruit, and gun. And what a lot of new players do is that they upgrade these things evenly, and this is something that you should definitely not be doing in the game. What I recommend for you guys to do is pick three things, and make sure that you definitely choose melee and defense. And the third one, in my opinion, should be either sword or blocks fruit, depending on what type of way you want to play the game. The melee stat points not only upgrade your combat style, but they actually give you extra energy, so it's basically two birds with one stone. And the defense stat is something that you're definitely going to need if you want to level up in the game, because it increases the amount of health you have. And once you get onto harder opponents in the second and third seed, if you don't have a good amount of health, you're going to struggle a lot with grinding. And even with pvp so make sure you put your third stat points on either your sword or your fruit because those are the main things that you're going to be using in your grinding process for the game okay so this is a mistake that i still see a lot of second and third c players making it's the way you grind your hockey it's an ability that you buy from the abilities teacher and it increases your defense and offense stats making it a really good ability and you can even change the color of it and the mistake i see people making is that some people actually grind their hockey with their blocks fruit so for example, if some people have the light or ice fruit and they choose to grind their hockey with the sword passive ability. But the really bad thing about this is even if you have your hockey turned on and you're grinding with the fruit, you will not get any points towards your hockey. Oh, no. Which is kind of weird addition to blocks fruits if you ask me. But nevertheless, make sure you're using a sword or a combat style. So there's actually a really good way to completely max out your hockey overnight. And the way you do this is you equip a really bad sword. I recommend the katana because it's literally the worst sword in the game. And then all you have to do is equip an elemental fruit, which means the enemies without hockey won't be able to hit you. And then you can go to any enemy on the map that does not possess hockey and then you can stand on their spawn point and leave an auto clicker with your sword on. And the reason you want to use a bad sword is the way your hockey upgrades actually goes based on how many times you hit the enemy, not the amount of damage you do. And then if you leave this auto clicker overnight, you should get max hockey in literally one night. Pretty cool trick if you ask me. Okay, so this is a mistake I see a lot of raid farmers making. What I mean by this is not using the correct fruits or ways to grind raids to make your efficiency 10 times better. So starting off, you definitely want to be using the Buddha fruit to grind your raids with because it's literally the best fruit for grinding and to use for raids. And the reason for this is that the range that you can hit people with the Buddha actually increases by a lot when you transform. Which means you can do damage to your enemies without them being able to do damage to you. So when you're clearing out your raids and you get to low health with the Buddha fruit, you can literally just walk onto the water and stand still. And the enemies won't be able to reach you. Which means if you play correctly, you basically have infinite health during your raids. Since the Buddha has a 50% damage reduction, which means even if you have low defense points, you can complete a raid no problem. And also, if you're grinding raids just for fragments, Fragments, make sure you're not doing any raid other than the flame raid and each raid gives you the exact same amount of fragments So just make sure you're doing the easiest one Okay, so this is a mistake that I see almost everybody doing it's trading wrong 
there's actually two different ways to trade in blocks fruits way number one is just hopping into your local blocks fruit server and just spamming the chat asking if anybody can trade a fruit instead of doing that what i recommend you guys do is actually join some blocks fruits trading discord servers and this is so much easier because you can just go into the trading chat and literally just type the fruits you're offering and what you want in return and then you just simply wait for a dm and once you get one you can just hop into game with the person and just trade the fruit much easier than server hopping several amount of times just to get that one trade that you want okay so now i'm gonna be telling you guys the best way to grind xp in this game if you're not using the butter fruit it means you're grinding the game completely wrong the butter fruit is literally the best grinding fruit you can ask for because you can hit people without them being able to hit you which means you can put most of your stat points into your melee and you don't even need to put that much into your defense and this helps you kill your enemies much faster Okay, so everybody knows that there's countless ways to grind blocks fruits. You can do the factory raid, defend the castle on the sea, do a bunch of ship raids, picking up fruits that spawn, and buying them from the blocks fruit dealer or blocks fruit gacha. But I see a lot of people doing it incorrectly. People just running around the map and trying to find fruits that are just lying down on the floor. And I also see a lot of people trying to grind ship raids for them. But doing ship raids is actually a huge mistake if you want to grind fruit. You have a really low chance of getting fruits from a ship raid. And walking around picking up fruits if you don't have the game pass is extremely difficult because you have to go around the whole sea and check every single island. But if you have a blocks fruit radar, that's definitely the best way to grind. But I don't think a lot of you have a bunch of spare robux to spend on that. So you might be wondering, what is the exact best way to grind fruits in the game well it's something that a bunch of you might know the blocks fruit gotcha the blocks fruit gotcha gives you a random fruit every time you roll and depending on what level you have you have to pay a different amount to roll a fruit you can buy a fruit from him every three hours and if you create a bunch of new roblox accounts grind them up to a high enough level to buy from him that three hour cooldown gets way lower depending on how many accounts you have so if you want to grind fruits this is definitely the best way Okay, so this is one of the most crucial elements to Blocks Fruits, and I still see a lot of people doing it wrong. I'm talking about PvP. And some of you might be thinking, PvP is just randomly spamming your abilities and just hoping you kill your opponent. But there's actually a lot of unseen tactics that goes into it. One of the most important things towards PvP is observation. Your observation hockey literally defends you from multiple attacks. But there's actually some abilities that break observation. And this is what you're going to want to get your hands on if you want to be good at PvP. And next up, you actually want to learn a bunch of combos. It would be too long to list every combo here, but if you're interested in learning some combos, just search them up on Google. And there's also a second element that goes into PvP. I'm talking about your movement. A lot of you might have fruits that actually have movement abilities, and this is something you definitely want to abuse in PvP. If you move around really fast, your opponent will have a really hard time being able to hit you, unless they have super pro aim. Dashing can be the literal difference between winning or losing a PvP fight. As well as sky jumps. Sky jumps as well are really important. If you combine dashes and sky jumps, it's really hard for your opponent to hit you. But keep in mind, if you're moving around using sky jump and dash, it's also going to be pretty difficult for you to hit your opponent. So I guess PvP comes down to whoever's aim is better. And on the topic of aim, make sure you choose the right sensitivity. It can be the difference between you winning a PvP fight or losing one. Okay, so next up we got sea beast hunting. And sea beast hunting is something that I mentioned a lot in my previous videos, but I never actually told you guys the best way to do it. And to this day, I still see a lot of people hunting sea beasts the wrong way. And sea beasts are actually super overpowered mini bosses. So if you don't have the right equipment to fight one, then you're probably going to be dying. And you might be wondering, what is the best way to fight a sea beast? Well, it actually depends on what type of player you are and the way you want to take down the sea beast. But what I recommend is shark v4 combined with the awakened magma. And the reason for this is that when you use the abilities of Awakened Magma, there's actually a puddle that stays behind for a while, dealing a bunch of damage to players and NPCs that stand in it. If you shoot it at its core, you're going to be dealing constant damage to the Sea Beast. And the reason you want Shark V4 is obviously because you're always surrounded by water. And it's probably the most overpowered race for water combat. Another upside to Sea Beast hunting is that it's one of the best ways to farm money in the game. So now you know the best way to grind some Sea Beast and some money at the same time. I'm going to be giving you guys some tricks for every gun in blocks fruits and i'm also going to be telling you about some secret guns that you might have not known existed so first up we got the slingshot the first gun that everybody buys in blocks fruits this gun costs a cheap amount of 5,000 belly and the place you get it is in middletown by talking to the weapons dealer the c ability for this gun is called sticky pellet and it fires a pellet that forms a trap once it hits any surface dealing a decent amount of damage and making them unable to leave the circle but keep in mind that this move does not summon the trap if it directly hits the enemy the x ability is called 
called explosive pellet and it's exactly what it sounds like. You fire a red pellet and once it hits somebody, it explodes. And overall, this is really decent because it only has a 40 mastery requirement, but you're probably going to be switching to something better once you have the money for it. Okay, so now we have the flintlock and it can also be bought from the weapons dealer in Middletown. And this one costs 10,500 belly. The Z ability for this gun is called disabling shot and it shoots a purple bullet. If anybody gets hit by this bullet, they'll be stunned for a very short amount of time, around two seconds. And this only has a 15 mastery requirement. The X ability is called rapid gun and this one shoots three bullets that all explode upon contact. This one has an 80 mastery requirement, so you're probably going to switch to a different gun if you're a beginner. This gun is really good for gathering and grinding NPCs. And overall, there's not much else to be said about that gun. I mean, it's pretty decent, but it's not the best in the game. So the third gun on this list is called the musket. And this is a gun that can also be bought in the first C. And the place you get it is in Middletown from the weapons dealer. And it costs a total of only 8,000 belly. The first ability is called Dragon's Bullet. It fires a small explosive to where your cursor is pointing. And this is kind of similar to its M1 ability, but it's a way bigger version of it, making it a lot cooler. And this only requires a 20 mastery because it's more of a starter gun than anything else. The X ability is called Bold Pistero. You basically shoot a bullet and it summons a tornado and it drags anybody nearby into it. And the closer they are to the tornado, the higher up they're thrown. And this ability has a total of a 50 mastery requirement. This gun has a more damage per shot than the flint lock and the slingshot but it does have a higher reload time making it pretty bad it still has pretty decent combo potential for a beginner gun next up is the refined slingshot and it's exactly what it sounds like it's just a slingshot it even looks similar it's just a refined version of it and this is a gun that can be bought at marine fortress from the advanced weapon dealer for 30,000 belly and the moves of it are kind of similar and it just deals way more damage first up sticky pellet it's exactly the same thing it forms a circle when it hits a surface and deals a bunch of damage if it hits the enemy and and the X move is explosive pellet. It fires an explosive pellet that deals a huge amount of damage, knocking enemies away. Like I said before, they're the exact same moves, but keep in mind that they're way better and deal way more damage. So next up is the refined flintlock, and it's obviously the upgraded version of the flintlock, and it also looks a lot better in my opinion. As far as abilities go, it's basically the exact same as the normal flintlock, but they deal way more damage. And the way you get this gun is from the advanced weapons dealer, who's located at Marine Fortress for 65,000 bells. Decent thing about this gun is that it's really cheap, but obviously since it's cheap, it does pretty low damage, so you're gonna think carefully whether to buy it or not. Next up, we have a rare gun, and this one's called the Cannon. And the place you can buy this is also from the Advanced Weapon Dealer, who's also located in Marine Fortress. And this gun costs a total of 100,000 belly, making it one of the most expensive guns so far. The X ability for this gun has a 40 mastery requirement, and it's called Alpha Wave. It fires a large orange beam that will stun and drag any player when hit. The X ability shoots three small orange pellets that will burst into flames when it touches the ground, leaving behind a fire trail that will deal extra damage whenever an enemy is harmed. And this ability has a 100 mastery requirement, making it pretty easy to master. Okay, so next up we have the refined flintlock, and this gun is really similar to the flintlock, but the only difference is that it does way more damage, and the moves look a little bit different. And the way you get them is by talking to the advanced weapon dealer who's located in Marine Fortress. And the amount of money it costs to buy the gun is 65,000 belly, so it's still pretty cheap, but maybe not for first C players. Good things about this gun is really cheap. Even though it's a pretty bad gun for this list, it's still one of of the best guns for the first C. Bad thing about this gun is that it focuses more on stunning, which means its damage isn't as high as it should be. And it becomes less useful once you enter the second C because there's way more options to choose from. The bazooka is a legendary gun and can be dropped by the level 500 boss in Upper Skylands. The boss's name is Whisper and you can get it with a 5-10% to chance. The Z ability is called Alpha Wave and the user fires a large orange beam similar to the Flame Fruit's X ability and the skill requires 100 mastery. The X ability for this gun is where the user launches 4 small bullets and on impact they cause burn damage. The really good thing about this gun is that it deals one of the highest amounts of damage in the game for click attacks. But pretty bad thing about it is that it obviously has a really long reload time. And it's kinda hard to combo with because of its slow attacks. And lastly, the special attacks literally deal less damage than the click attack, making it a pretty bad gun to use. 
Now we have the Acetum Rifle, and this is a rare gun. And the really cool thing about this gun is that it deals poison damage over time, and has the highest clicking damage out of every gun in the game. And it's used a lot in PvP because both its abilities have the power to break observation, making it really good for combos. The way you get this rifle is dropped from the factory raid in the second C, and it only has a 20% chance of dropping. That's literally a 1 in 5 chance, unless of course you have double drops. And while doing the factory raid, you don't have to carry the raid almost, you just have to do a decent amount of damage to be able to get this gun. So the first ability for this gun is called Spiky Bomb, and this shoots an explosive green ball that inflicts explosive damage upon contact, and also inflicts stun for a short period of time. The second ability is called Acidic Smoke, and this shoots balls of gas which deal decent amount of damage, inflicting poison that does tick damage over time, and this also disables enemies' observation, making it decent for PvP. And most people in the game that are not gun mains also use this gun because all its abilities have the potential to break instinct, making it really good for bounty hunting and other things like that. Next up is the Kabucha, and the way you get this gun is by going to Usopp's Island, which is located in a really stray place in the second sea. Once you go there, you can talk to the strongest god NPC, and he lets you buy it for 1,500 fragments. The most people that use this gun usually pair with Dark Awakening, Ice, Shisui, Cavendor, and Spiky Trident, because this gun really complements those abilities. The Z ability for this gun is called Flying Firebird. It's where the user shoots a flying bird that explodes and leaves a flame trail and does a bunch of damage, and it also breaks observation, making it really good for PvP. Second ability is called Intense Wind, and this is where the user fires a blast of wind that knocks enemies back and stuns them. And a good thing about this attack is that it can hit multiple targets, making it decent for PvP and for grinding. But overall, this gun is pretty decent, and if you want to use the full potential of it, you need to get to a mastery of 250. So, you better get grinding. Next up is the Bizarre Rifle, and this gun is often underlooked. It's a gun with really good combo potential, and the place you get it is in the second sea at the Cursed Ship by talking to this NPC. And the requirements for this are 25 ectoplasm, but keep in mind you have to be least level 1000 to be able to do this. The Z ability for this gun is called Heat Seeking Shot, and it's where you shoot out a blue ball that does a good amount of damage. Cool thing about this ability is that even if you miss this shot, you kind of have auto aim, so basically just tracks the user, making it kind of overpowered. The X ability is called Hellfire Shower, it's where you shoot a burst of 4 shots, kind of like the Awakened Flames burning effect, but these are much stronger and dark blue. This ability does break observation, making it pretty good for PvP. Overall, this gun is pretty decent for farming because of the high damage and the flames that deal even more. And it's also decent for PvP. And keep in mind that it's extremely cheap and definitely worth buying if you're a second C player. Next up is the Serpent's Bow. And the way you obtain this gun is by defeating the level 1675 boss, the Island Empress. The Island Empress is located on Hydra Island in the third C. And the drop rate for this gun is completely unknown, but people estimate it to be around 2 to 5%, making it really difficult to get even with double drops enabled. The Z ability for this gun is called Poisonous Blast, and this is where the user fires a fast purple projectile from their bow. It explodes in a purple blast upon contact with the enemy or the surface, and it deals instantaneous damage as well as poison damage. The X ability is called Snakebind, and this is where the user fires a medium speed purple projectile, and this projectile would chase the enemy for the bit, but it is possible to outrun it if you're really fast. When they hit an enemy, it deals a decent amount of damage and stuns them for a short time. Good thing about this gun is that both moves break observation making it really good for PvP. And the gun overall has really good damage for its M1 abilities and its overall skills. And it has really good range making it hard for people to run away from a fight. And it has a low mastery considering how good the gun is. Next up is the first mythical gun and the only mythical gun in the whole game. I'm obviously talking about the soul guitar. To get the soul guitar you must be at least level 2300. And then you can do the soul guitar puzzle quest which involves the full moon and a bunch of materials that are 500 bones, 200 50 ectoplasm, one dark fragment, and then all you have to do is simply finish the quest. This guitar is really good for raids because it has a life regeneration ability, allowing you to heal back your lost health. The first ability for this gun is called Soul Shaker, and this is where the user summons a skull with the power of the undead, which opens its mouth and starts shooting a bunch of soul beam at players nearby, and it also deals high damage, knocking them away, similar to the Kabucha's X move. The X ability is called El Diablo, and this ability is similar to the previous ability, making it really hard to dodge. And another really good thing about it is that the M1 ability, the Z ability, and the X ability all break instinct, making it even more overpowered for PvP. But even though the Z ability does really good damage, it's kinda hard to use and hard to hit players with. And some people think that this gun can actually damage rubber users, but that's kinda false. I mean, it's a gun. No gun can do damage to rubber users. Next up is the shotgun, and many of you probably have not heard of this gun. The only people that can use it are admin and mods. It's been used before by one of 
the owners of the game, Rip Indra. And the first place people saw this gun being used is a video uploaded by a YouTuber named Mr. Blocks. This is where he fought Rip Indra, and you can see him using the gun during their fight. And that's pretty much all that's known about the gun. I mean, it's kind of hard to know things about the gun when people can't even use it.